outrageous for the Jayhawks of late. They've won nine straight here. They'll go for 10 in a row today when the Texas A&M Aggies come to town. Two teams looking for their first conference win, and it's coming up right now on FSN. Today, Texas A&M takes their show on the road, marching into hostile Kansas Jayhawk territory. Both teams are coming off heartbreaking near misses last week. Texas A&M will run the ball down your throat. Kansas running back John Cornish has rushed for 100 yards or more four times this season. It's only October, but a loss today could knock somebody into the wait till next year zone. Get ready for a Big 12 conference grudge match and plenty of hard-nosed pounding of the football. It's homecoming weekend on the Kansas campus. The Aggies and the Jayhawks next. as Dr. Pepper brings you Big 12 college football. It's the Kansas Jayhawks at 3 and 2 to host the Texas A&M Aggies who come in losing last weekend to Texas Tech. Both these teams anxious for a Big 12 win. Welcome everyone, Bill Land, Gary Reasons, glad to have you aboard. It is homecoming here in Lawrence and KU's been tough at home. In fact, they're looking for their 10th straight home victory. They got it going here in Lawrence. Well, they're playing well at home and I tell you, both these teams, Bill, they're looking for a first conference win last week. Who could forget that? Texas Tech coming into A&M and winning that ball game in the last 30 seconds. And for Kansas, losing two overtime games last week, especially against Nebraska, a tough loss for them. So we'll see how they'll rebound, both teams. For Texas A&M, they've got a fine running attack and Jaworski Lane, who was almost a tandem by himself, but if he needs help, he gets it from his quarterback mate. Well, I'll tell you, Texas A&M's done a great job running the football. They lead the Big 12 Conference in rushing, and they do it kind of by committee. Javorski Lane, a big bruising tailback, 275-pounder. He's going to test his Kansas defense, and Stephen McGee, he'll get out on the edge and run the ball as well. Now, you take a look at the other side for this University of Kansas team. Quarterback Adam Barman expected to get the shot here today. Whoever gets the shot, whether it's he or Kerry Meyer, be handed off a lot to John Cornish. Cornish has really become a consistent runner. Really has been consistent there for the tailback spot. He's a senior. He's a guy who knows how to do it. Last week against Nebraska, 145 yards in that football game. He's a guy that catches the ball well out of the backfield. So he's a dual threat guy in the backfield for him. And speaking of Barman, last week he threw for 405 yards. Expected to start today. He's got a host of receivers to go to. I tell you, these guys are all big play guys. Brian Murph goes down the field. He's got speed. Dexton Fields, he's kind of a possession guy. And Marcus Henry, a huge receiver to throw to. So either quarterback, whether it's going to be Barman or Kerry Meyer, I think we'll see Barman, though. He'll have those guys to throw to. All right, should be fun. Very even matchup today between Kansas and Texas A&M. As the Aggies leave the state of Texas for the first time this year, Dennis Franchoni and Mark Mangino head-to-head. -head. We come back we'll check in with the guys in the studio mark brother mike demarco and billy ray as coach franchoni number six overall though in victories for active coaches with 175 as he brings his eggs to town at four and one and mark mangino the head coach for kansas his fifth year as the jayhawks hoping to become the first team in their school history to have back-to-back -back bowl appearances as this club comes in at three and two, they've lost a pair of overtime games. Nebraska last weekend on the road to Toledo earlier this fall. Watch Chuck Jayhawk. Good crowd for homecoming here in Lawrence. And watch out on the Aggie return game as Texas A&M with Kerry Franks and crew. Franks has returned one for a touchdown. Pierre Brown also deep as Webb boots it off. Franks lets it sail right through his hands and go out of the end zone and be a touchback. First to 10 at the 20. Here's our Liberty Mutual starting lineup for the Texas A&M Aggies. The quarterback, Stephen McGee, last week suffered a slight concussion. They didn't discover it till after the game. He threw for 103 yards, ran for 42. The offensive line, Babalo, as well as Elder, Wallace, Dickey, and Clark. The backs and receivers. Lane is a ton at six foot 274. Alexander Schrader, Taylor, and Bennett, the rest of the group. Schrader, their leading receiver, with 370 to 322 on the season yardage wise. First to 10 for the Aggies. And McGee to throw it on first down. Go! Incomplete, trying to go to Bennett. 
And let's take a look at the Liberty Mutual starters for the Kansas defensive group as the Jayhawks come in here with a ball club that has been tough against the run this year. You take a look at one of the best in Paul Como. He's their sack leader with six on the or six for loss and three sacks on the season. The rest of the folks up front, the linebackers, Morton Rivera, Holt gets the start because of the injury to Washington. Webb, Kemp, Muhammad, and Talib are in the secondary. Second and ten for Texas A&M. McGee, good protection, and it is complete to Alexander. Still on his feet, and knocked out of bounds at the 27-yard line, it appears. Well, Bill, we know the Texas A&M wants to run the football, but I, well, I think they really have a chance to pass the football against this KU defense. They rank 12th in the Big 12, Bill, and yards allowed 264 a game and they're starting out early here the first couple plays of the ball game getting the ball out on the perimeter trying to throw the football so look for them to do that but they do have a balanced running attack they've got four or five guys that'll get the football in the backfield and they do lead the big 12 but it's by committee pick up a 13 for the first down at the 33 first and 10 for texas a&m and complete to bennett he goes to the 40, shows you his strength. He is 6'7", 248 pounds. You've seen him in basketball as well as Jerome Kemp makes the tackle, but he picks up around nine on the play. Yeah, when he got a big tight end that can go like this, catch the football, football outside and use his body and his strength, that's a good weapon for a quarterback to have. And Martellus Bennett, he's one of those dual threat guys. He plays on the basketball court, as you said, Bill, and it's a young man that they feel like he's got a lot. They've got a lot of ability. They want him to touch the football. I'm going to mention all conference last year with 18 grabs for 162 yards and three touchdowns. In trouble, nearly picked off as McGee just let that thing go. And he was wrapped up by Rivera. Boy, that's almost a six points for Kansas. Mike Rivera from the middle linebacker spot comes around and gives pressure. And almost an interception here by Wilder, number 91. McGee throws it right at his chest. I think he's trying to throw the football away. This is almost a big mistake here by Steve McGee early in this ballgame. Good rush by the Jayhawks. Well, McGee's only had one interception on the year compared to six touchdowns, but that's a near giveaway. Now, this defense has been pretty decent. They've got 12 sacks on the year, the Jayhawks do, but they've been able to pressure some quarterbacks and make them throw a little bit off time. Third and one at the 42 for Texas A&M, and a timeout is called by McGee. We'll take a brief break as well. No score in the early going. First possession for the Aggies of Texas A&M. We'll be right back on our Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week. Third and one. They have been the best in the Big 12, just about 44% in third down conversions as McGee brings them out. The option. Goodson trying to turn the corner, has the first down, and then shows a little power as well as speed. Run out of bounds by Rivera and Talib, and they get the first down. Interesting, they come back with the freshman Goodson instead of the big fellow Lane. Exactly right. Wondering why Javorski Lane, you wouldn't pound the ball ahead, but you got a freshman running back who's got some wheels, and they use Goodson on the outside, and Steve McGee with the quick pitch gets that first down and then some. How about our American Century keys to the game today, Gary? Well, for, for Texas A&M, we want to find out, can they run the ball against this, this Kansas defense, who's done very well stopping the run, and can they throw the ball vertically, make some big plays, and obviously you want to keep KU doing what they've been doing, and that's turning the ball over, so you need to force some turnovers for your football team. First and 10 at midfield for McGee and Texas A&M. Goods in the tailback. Here's McGee on the option. And McGee. Shoulders it out of bounds, picks up a couple on the play, and brought down by Joe Mortensen, a sophomore from Concord, California. You're going to see all types of option plays from this A&M offense. This is the lead option here where you've got a fullback coming in front of Steve McGee coming down the line of scrimmage and does a good job of just getting two or three yards and really wasn't a hard thing for him to do to get that. So that's what you want to do on first down. You want to get two, three, four positive yards if you can and just get up on second down with a good, good play call. KU is last in the league in pass defense, allowing 264 yards per game. That's 112th in the NCAA. Let's see what the Aggies test him with on second and seven. With play action. McGee in trouble. Escapes one defender. And throws this one away. 
third down coming up. He's hurried on the play by James McClinton, a junior out of Garland, Texas. Well, I tell you what, if you're a fullback in this offense, you're going to come down here to get the fake. Watch number 24 get full there, and then he's actually going to should work away from a linebacker here and give Steve McGee a chance to get some find somebody open. He's just sitting there, and McGee's just not seen him. That's your check down in this offense. When you block, go through the hole, that's a check down receiver, and quarterback's got to find you. You've got to get open. McGee, a sophomore, 6'3", 208 pounds, completing 65% of his passes, been running for 5.8 per carry. And it's third and seven here at the 47 of Kansas. He to throw. Good protection. And incomplete. And Kansas is hell. Yeah, Bennett tried to do a square in right there. And he would have been wide open in the middle of the field because both safeties were well outside the hash marks. Martellus Bennett tried to turn inside, but not able to do so. Slipped and uh, kind of lost a, had a flat tire there trying to come inside. Jonathan Lamb is the deep man here for University of Kansas. Texas A&M, Justin Brantley will be the punter. 49.5 per kick. He's been outstanding. Sophomore out of Sealy, Texas. Lamb takes it on the 10. And breaks through to about the 17-yard line for the University of Kansas. And he's brought down by Bullet. Let's take a look at our Liberty Mutual starters here now for the University of Kansas. And once again, it appears Adam Barman will get the start, his third straight start. He threw for 405 yards and a pair of touchdowns in that loss to Nebraska. Up front, Rodriguez, Whitaker, Ochoa, Dombach, and Collins. And the backs and receivers, Cornish, we told you, is off to a great start this year. McAnderson, Murph, Fields, and Fine guys to throw to. And on first and 10, hands it off to Cornish. And Cornish jitterbugs a bit. And gets out to the 25-yard line where he is brought down. And we'll flip to the other side for Liberty Mutual and the starting defenders for Texas A&M. The Aggies, one of their leaders certainly up front is Chris Harrington. He is their sack leader on the season. The backers to pay as well as Justin Warren. He is their leading tackler, Warren. And there's your secondary folks. Keep an eye on Brock Newton, who is known as the whip back, as he'll be kind of like a rover type. It is... Second down and two for the 25, and they complete it. And a first down as fine as the receiver. Well, you see the 4-2-5 defense. It's new for Texas A&M here in Kansas, exploiting that on the outside, both in the run game and now in a quick pass. That's something I think important for Adam Barman to get settled down early in this ball game because last week against Nebraska did not complete a pass in the first quarter, Bill. So got his first pass under his belt, good throw and catch. So he's uh, he's off and running. Now, let me check that. That was Marcus Henry with the reception. Henry getting his 17th grab of the year to set him up first and 10 at the 36. Cornish. Both coaches stressing hanging on to the football as a key today. Well, let's take a look at some more from American Century. Well, I think the defensive ends for this football game for KU, they've got to play well. They've got to contain the quarterback, Steve McGee, on offense and that big tailback to tackle him. And I think they've got to stop the bleeding. That is, they've got to stop giving the ball away the turnovers. They've had a bunch of turnovers, throwing the ball, interceptions, and fumbles. And I think they need to try to stretch this Texas A&M defense and try to get that ball down the field. They can do it with Murph. In, excuse me, with the uh, straighter out on the outside. Kansas is 12th in the league in turnover margin, so that's how important it is. Second down now. Harmon's pass incomplete, intended for Murph. Brian is a senior from Howardville, Missouri. Texas A&M, one of the things they did this last year, Bill, is they changed defensive coordinators. Gary Darnell came in and to start with the two with the 425 defense and this is what they've done change from 05 to 06 just the, the overall improvement from 440 yards a game to now just in this season 38th in the country about 294 yards a game it's not where they want to be but it's certainly a definite improvement from what they had a year ago yeah, Aggies and that tradition of that wrecking crew and uh, that's something they want to get back to and they're making great strides it's third down and eight for Kansas at the 38 of KU no score first quarter Barman Chased out of the pocket, Thornton on him. And he completes it. And short of the first down, McAnderson is the receiver. Justin Warren makes the tackle. Picks up about six on the play. 
Okay. Anderson, his second reception of the year. Yeah, good job of the secondary by the Aggies, not allowing anybody to get open. Harrington comes loose here on his left defensive end spot. He comes outside and almost gets a hold of Adam Barman, but good job by Russ, by Warren there, coming up making a tackle short of the first down. So Kansas will punt on its first possession here, or it would appear, with a fourth and two. And that brings on Kyle Tucker. Schrader is the deep man for Texas A&M. Fake punt. And the pitch. And Nick Anderson, he is Warren for the 25, the 20, and knocked out of bounds near the 10-yard line. I did say it would appear they would punt, and... A little razzle-dazzle from the Jayhawks, and they're knocking on the door, first and goal to go. Well, your punter's going to take this football and just toss it right up to the front, so he does a nice job of it. And I tell you, they confused that all Texas A&M here. Look at Texas A&M. They're bailing out here, and got one around the edge. Going to run right in here. Good job of just going right where, taking the, the, the rush team out of their lanes, and good blocking downfield here. Mick Anderson doing a nice job. Hey, don't be, don't be Superman. Just get down the field and get a good first down, and the Jayhawks continue on offense. First and goal from the eight-yard line. McAnderson stays in the game along with Cornish. The back's behind the quarterback, Adam Barman. Barman a little option. Cornish, oh, hit hard and brought down on the play. Making the tackle, Melvin Bullock, the safety, a senior from Garland, Texas. And they lose four on it. And Melvin Bullock, he's one of those big hitters out there. And that's what you want to do. You want to make a stand on defense if you're Texas A&M. you got a big explosive play in the... Fake punt, but now you come up. You got to do something here, and John Cornish knocks him off his pegs pretty easily. And a negative play there on first down. So now second and goal from the 12-yard line for KU. Nick Anderson. He goes straight forward, gets it down to the seven. It's going to be a third and goal from there, where Warren made the tackle. You know, be a lot of. A lot of praise really does not go to this KU offensive line, but they have been improving overall. They've got a couple of seniors up there in the middle. Bob Whitaker, the guard, and David Ochoa, the center. Those two kind of lead things, and Travis Dombach fills in as well. They're a big group up there, well over 300 pounds, that whole offensive line. So they're guys that are capable of pounding it out and moving a defensive line out of the way. An average of 161 yards a game on the ground. Big third down here. Third and goal from the six for the Jayhawks. Barman with protection and completes it. Fields, he's in the end zone. Touchdown, Kansas. Dexton Fields. Well, a little special homecoming catch here for Dexton Fields, and he's excited. These fans inside guy is going to come and do the loop back here and look at everybody clear out. And there's just him one on one and over pursued by the Texas A&M defense. Nobody up in his face. They're in the end zone with the other receivers. Dexton Fields takes it in easily and. Good job for KU and calling a fake punt here, keeping the ball on their side and putting points on the board when you make a big play. And here is Webb for the point after. He's been 16 of 16, and he stays perfect as Scott Webb, a junior from Tulsa, Oklahoma, puts it through the uprights. Barman with a TD pass, and it's Kansas 7, Texas A&M 0. Strange when Kyle Tucker, your punter, is the leading passer in the ball game. One for 48. Pretty good job. Good call by Mark Mangino. Very efficient. What's his quarterback rating? Oh, great. <laughs> Off the charts. <laughs> Check in with Mike Goldberg now on a Dr. Pepper game break. Bill, thank you very much. In the Big Ten, number 19, Iowa, hosting Purdue. Albert Youngs is out. Damian Sims is in. Yes, he is. In the end zone. 7 nothing early Hawkeyes. Meantime, at Jordan Hare, a little upset alert. Arkansas has already beaten Alabama this year. They lead number three Auburn, three to nothing early. Bill, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Mike. Sue. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear him up there now. Big Sue. Where's that Billy Ray? Uh, Billy, Billy Ray's all over that one. <laughs> First to ten here for AM and on their second possession. And Javorski Lane pulls his way across the 25 to the 26, picks up six yards on the play. Well, this is what Javorski Lane brings. He's going to go into the second level of the defense. And the, these defensive backs have been told by their corner, hey, you need to tackle this big guy low. Don't go up high on him. Watch these guys going low to his legs. 
chop him down like a tree, and that's what the defensive backs are coming up and doing. Great job at the point of attack there. The offensive line getting a hole for Javorski Lane. Nobody touches until he gets back there. And these defensive backs, they don't want to tackle that 275 pounder all day. Second down and four for the Ags, and a whistle stops play. There's a handoff to Lane taking place. You know, we talked Ball to Bill. start, 13, offense, second down. You know, we talked to Bill Young, the defensive coordinator here for Kansas, and talked about tackling and how important that's going to be in this football game. And he said, you know, they've got to do. They've got a gang tackle. They've got to come up on these big backs and also the speedy backs that they have back there. We saw early in this drive, Goodson get out uh, in the first drive, Goodson get around the edge, and Steve McGee as well. So tackling, I think, is going to be very important for KU today in this football game against Texas A&M. And with a penalty. 21, second down and nine. And flags again. Scatter on the field. And there we go. Yemi got started a little, little faster there. Offense, five yard penalty, second down. Babalola. So the Ags face a little adversity here, coming off a loss to Texas Tech last week, 31-27. And you always want to know what the emotions are of a football team after a game like that. And you know, Kansas, they've gone through a couple of those, a couple of overtime losses themselves. So how do you respond the week after? Kansas has been put to the test, and now Texas a and certainly did the test after the loss last week to Tech. Second and 14. Goodson. Coming to the outside, then tries to cut it back up. He's shy of the 20, stopped by Jerome Kemp. Picks up three, and a flag is thrown. We may have a personal foul here at the end of this play. Like, look, somebody might have been kicking. I saw that right, but uh, let's see what the officials say. After the play, dead ball. Personal foul, number 70, offense. Half the distance to the go, third down. Wow, Drew George, our referee here today. Now Cody Wallace, number 70, is going to come outside here and get a little extracurricular activity. He's on Mike Rivera, the middle linebacker there. The play is dead right there. And something happened about five yards upfield, and I think there's some contact there, which is why the penalty resulted. So for the Yankees, you think you got Kansas stopped? They had the fake for 48 yards. Two plays later, they score a touchdown. Now they're backed up on their possession. Third and 20 on their own 10-yard line, and the crowd roaring here in Lawrence. McGee, he finds Lane, and he is brought down at the 15 by Akeem Tlaib. Picking up five yards, a punting situation now for Texas A&M. Good job of coming out there, KU defensively, not allowing Texas A&M to do anything, and Texas A&M with a couple of penalties on this drive, and go ahead and get it out to the, your fullback, your tailback, and tackle him low like you do here. Just go underneath, keep to leave, doing a good job of that coming up and stopping him for a short game. So Texas A&M now backed up at their goal line, punting the football. That means Justin Brantley again. Brantley, a 37-yard punt his first time. And he stands on the goal line. Murph is the deep man for Kansas at his own 43. Just about got a hand on it. High kick. Murph staying away from it. And that hit a Texas A&M yeah. player on the shoulder pad. Should be dead ball there about the 47-yard line where it was illegally touched. I'm not sure the officials actually saw it. There's not even a hacky sack on the field. They've got it marked at midfield. And regardless, Kansas is going to get great field position, leading at 7 0. Came off of uh, the. Texas A&M, I think that was Pierre Brown. Pierre Brown, not yeah. Brian Murphy. My Murph was an intended receiver of it. It is first and 10 now at the 46 of A&M. So Kansas getting great field position. Barman to Cornish and incomplete. Yeah, Cornish is a good receiver out of the backfield. 13 catches on the year. Surprising that ball is going to go through his hand. So he's a guy they like to get out on the perimeter as well. He shows, Bill, he shows flashes of, you know, of good good ability in the open field not just a guy who runs in between the tackles and 
John Cornish has been one of the steadiest players on his football team this season. He's got 13 receptions, so not just a runner, and 5.2 per carry on the ground. He's had four 100-yard games this year rushing the football, and it's a second and 10 here. Warren was the man covering on that last play. Here's Cornish. Hanging on as they reach for it. Gets to the 43-yard line. Henry Smith makes the tackle, picks up three on the play. As Kansas with a 7-0 lead, first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Search, shop, and save up to 70% at Overstock.com. So a pickup of three, and it's now the third down. Now this may be two-down situation here for KU up early in this ball game, and a chance here on third down, but obviously I think Mark Mangino, the way things are going, playing pretty well. Might even go on fourth if need be. Barman, so he can eliminate that decision. He is in trouble and brought down on a sack by Texas A&M at the 48-yard line of Kansas. Harrington is there. He gets his fourth and a half sack of the year and a loss of nine. Chris Harrington going on Cesar Rodriguez here, the little rip and up. And I tell you, Adam Barman gets out of the pocket because there's pressure inside, and a couple of guys are getting pressure on the quarterback, Chris Harrington, now with his fourth and a half sack on the season, three and a half coming in here. So those are updated numbers. And got, a little, got a little lineage there. Here's your best passer of the day, Kyle Tucker, coming back to punt. Fourth and 16 this time. And he gets it off. Schrader stays away from it. KU's going to have a shot at downing it. And does. Inside the five yard line. And AM's going to be backed up on its own three, it appears, for its next possession. Well, this may actually be spotted at the one yard line. It was hit illegally, and then it goes out of bounds around the three yard line. Good job here by the punter of sticking it down inside there. Good little English on it. It's the ball coming around. You see the touch there. He's at the one yard line, but the ball is around the three. So I think you get a spot right around the three yard line. Great job there. It's Derek Fine getting down there, making a good play. 49 yards on the boot, and AM with 4.11 to go in this first quarter. And tough field position once again. Yeah. Last time out there, punting near their end line, and now starting at the three yard line. Stephen McGee, McGee in the shotgun. He's got Lane beside him there in the backfield. Lane shifts, gets the football. Nothing doing. Kansas front is there. Mike Revere, a lot of talk about got a middle linebacker. You know he's going to be challenged going head to head against Javorski Lane. And he said, bring it on. Looking forward to playing against him. Yeah, you got to get these big guys up front. Defensive line got to control gaps, and your linebackers got to play. And good job of sticking up in there, Rivera. Heady linebacker. Wanted to get in there and make something happen. And this guy, I think, is playing very well. James McClinton holds down the defensive line very well. I think he's playing at all Big 12 level right now, Bill. Second down and nine for Texas A&M. Goodson and a loss on the play here. As he is nearly stuffed back in his own end zone, and there is McClinton. Well, just take a look at what McClinton does here and how quick his hands are and feet are. Feet are. He's going to slap with his right arm. Watch this. Slap and go around over and make the tackle for a loss at the two-yard line. That's what James McClinton has done for this KU defense up front. He has picked up his game in a big way, and he's a force down there. They normally have to use two to block him because he's so strong and athletic. He heard you say, all Big 12, all right, I'll show him. <laughs> right on cue. You, James taking advantage of the opportunity Kansas defensively here's what their rush defense has been like and back to back here is pretty stout it's third and 11 McGee out of his own end zone Schrader has overthrown and now Texas A&M will have to kick it out of their own end zone with 223 to go and a fourth and long coming up well, KU pressures the quarterback again. Stephen McGee going to have John Larson in his face and not able to throw that ball out there. He had a, an open receiver outside. Chad Schrader open out there, but just a little bit overthrown. Now Murph lines up inside his own, you know, the Texas A&M 40-yard line, about the 35-yard line. a and is backed up right about the 1-2-yard line to punt this football. Brantley at the back of the end zone. He gets it off, and Murph with the return at the 30, 25, hit hard, but he takes it to the 22-yard line. 
Well, Coach, he's talking about field position, and, K and KU is definitely winning the field position game here. Doing a good job on defense back in Texas A&M up, and they've not been able to get out of their own end zone. 33-yard punt, 13-yard return. Let's check in with Emily Jones. Guys, you were talking about the tackling job that Kansas has been doing thus far. Also, in talking to defensive coordinator Bill Young yesterday, I asked him if Javorski Lane reminded him of anyone. He said, we've been pumping him up as Jerome Bettis to our players in order to kind of get them fired up, inspire them. And clearly, it's been working this afternoon. Now the bus has been stalled so far, if you're calling him that. Here is Cornish, and he gets across the 20. Here's Mike Goldberg with a Dr. Pepper game break. Well, Bill, the Auburn Tigers, one of two teams in the nation that have not allowed a rushing touchdown this season. Problem is, they allow a big play here. Mitch Mustaine pass to Marcus Mike. 50 yards for the score. Arkansas thinking upset. They lead 10 to nothing at Auburn first quarter. Bill. Wow, how about those hogs? Billy Ray has got to be going <laughs> crazy back in the studio. <laughs> the pop pops down right now. Uh, he's he's going to come out with the big hat on. I know he's going to have that at halftime. Second and eight. Pass across the middle is incomplete. Intended for Derek Fine from Adam Farman. And Greg was covering in the secondary the free safety. Well, the one thing you don't want to do, and I think KU has probably had as bad a run of this in this season, is get into the red zone and do what they've done this season. That is misfire. The turnovers, the problems that they've had. They're 16 of 24 in the red zone, only 67%. But, Bill, two fumbles and three interceptions. Adam Barman cannot make mistakes at the quarterback spot. Mark Mangino, he, he might blow a gasket over there if something like that happens with this drive. Third down and eight to go. Barman dumps it off Cornish. Tries to shed a tackler. Aggies come swarming to the football, though, and finally corral him and bring him down near the... 17. Danny Gore was there. Three yard pickup for Gore, a sophomore from Fort Arthur, Texas, makes the stop for Texas AM. Yeah, so they're going to try the field goal here. Didn't get the first down, but uh, good job of holding on to the ball, John Corners, because he had a lot of Aggies there, and they're trying to get that football out. You get to see him tackle. You see, that's what coaches teach you when you get them held up like that, pull that football out, but Cornish strongly holds on to it. 38 seconds to go in the quarter, and on a fourth and four. Webb comes on. He is four of six in the field goal category, going for a 33 yarder here. And this one is long enough, and it is good. So Scott Webb, who missed his first two this season, has now hit five straight. And Kansas gets great field position after the exchange and tacks on three more. It's 10 0 Jayhawks in the final minute of this first quarter. I want to remind you the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game is coming back to Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City just down I-70. It'll be December 2nd this year. Get your tickets by calling the number on your screen, logging on to Ticketmaster.com. And great action at Arrowhead for the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game. Okay, you making a mark saying, hey, we'd like to be there this season with a pretty good effort so far early in this ballgame. Mark Mancino's got to be very pleased with how his offense has gone out there and executed, not made any mistakes, and defensively, they have really negated anything that Texas A&M is trying to get going. Of course, Kansas never been to the Big 12 title game, and this is the 11th year now of the Big 12 conference. There's the Michelin scoring drive. Three plays, six yards. Webb, the 33-yarder. Strange to see a three-play drive for six yards and you put points on the board. That's the field position that they've got on that punt return. Texas A&M, they hesitate, then they bring it out. And out near the 25-yard line for Texas A&M is Pierre Brown. Well, Pierre Brown, the one thing he does, he makes a slow decision, but i tell you what the thing I really like. He goes straight down the middle of the field. He's going to go right up there. He's not deviating in any way. He says, I better at least get to the 20-yard line, get beyond that to the 26-27. So a little slow coming out of the end zone, but he gets a good return. So it sets up AM when the second quarter gets underway. They'll flip-flop ends, and they'll have a first and 10 for the 26. But it is the Kansas Jayhawks, the early story here in Lawrence on homecoming Saturday. It is the Jayhawks with a Barman touchdown pass and a web field goal leading it 10 to nothing. We'll be back after this word from Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper Bobblers. Here. 
Morrow in motion there. McGee on the option. Shreds a tackler, and McGee picks up the first down. Nice little scamper for Stephen McGee. Yeah, this is down the line option, and what does a good job for this for Stephen McGee is his outside receivers on the outside, they all get locked up on somebody, so he doesn't have to make a decision. He's not running that defensive end. That's not a problem for him, but the blocking downside, down, downfield, you see Joey Thomas, the tight end, doing a good job, and what he's done this year is pretty impressive. 184 yards a game. His completion percentage is high, almost 65%. And only has had one interception this year throwing the football. So Steve McGee has been a very, very capable quarterback. And I think somebody that Dennis Franchione is very glad to have in his program. Uh, replacing uh, McNeil. Played five and a half quarters last year when McNeil got hurt. Saw some action against OU and, of course, against Texas. So he got his feet wet. But this is his first real opportunity. Let's check in with Emily Jones. First down. Well, guys, this is technically the Texas A&M Aggies' second road game. But if you count the first one, it was in San Antonio, which is about an hour drive from College Station. They were taking on Army. It was technically, like I said, a road game. It was a 28-24 victory, but this is the first time all season that the Aggies have been on someone else's turf. So it may be taking them a little while to get adjusted to uh, the hostile environment here in Lawrence. Yeah, good point. Thank you, Emily. They opened up the things this year, beating the Citadel, Louisiana Lafayette, Army in San Antonio, she mentioned, and then Louisiana Tech back in College Station before falling in their Big 12 over to Texas Tech, 31 to 27. And that was a thriller. Boy, what a pass by Van Harrell to Johnson that bumped off the Aggies in College Station last weekend. First and 15 following the penalty. McGee to throw it and complete. No, Morrow got jarred from the football. Nice hit by Akeem Tlaib in the secondary for Kansas. And a little pressure that time inside by Eris Wright, the linebacker, and good job outside. But Eris Wright getting a chance to play here. You see on the right side of your screen, he's going to come into this hole and get back there by McGee. And he's playing because last week, if you watched the game against Nebraska KU, Eric Washington, their linebacker, hurt late in that ball game. And good news for uh, for KU fans that uh, he is well. He, and, uh, he was up and saw him at practice yesterday. And uh, we want to say all his... Thank for all his prayers and wishes, and just want to tell the KU fans that he's okay. Yeah, and, uh, slowly recovering, but feeling much, much better. Here's McGee. Try to follow a blocker, and then is brought down hard to the turf by James McClinton at the 43-yard line. Seven-yard pickup for McGee. Well, you know, he's just a sophomore back there, McGee is, and he's got to make good decisions. And this is a great decision not to throw the ball down in the secondary and perhaps get it picked off and just use your feet and athleticism to bring up third down and six. And now you have a chance to manage, perhaps get a first down here. They need to get something going here against his KU defense. McGee, for all of his talents, and he certainly has a bunch of them, maybe the best thing is just his competitive nature and his leadership. You throw all that in with the ability this guy's got, and you can see why the Aggies are very excited about what's down the line. Third and seven, he needs a big play here, and whistled just as the ball was snapped and dropped. Now, John Larson came across the line of scrimmage for KU, and I think he made the offensive tackle jump. It's going to be interesting to see where they call it against KU or Texas A&M. Yeah. It's one of those both pointing at the other guy deals. Offsides, defense, five-yard penalty, third down, yeah. number 40. Well, I think they got the number wrong, but uh, nonetheless, going against KU, going to bring up a third and short. You see on the bottom of your screen here, John Larson, this is 87 right here. It's not number 40 inside. They made a mistake on the number, but that's an in neutral zone infraction. So, much better deal for Texas A&M. Now you're third and two. Got a little bit more run pass option here. At the 48 yard line. Lane is the guy in motion at the bottom of your screen. And now McGee to throw. And he has got a complete for the first down at the 44 yard line of Kansas Kemp covering on the play. And eight yard pickup to uh, Jay Schrader. That's a good confident throw to Jay Schrader who pushes the defense back, stops, comes back. Good play to throw the football. You see him up here, he's gonna stop and come right back to Steve McGee and good good target there, gets that first down. You got a little cushion there by Tlaib. He needs to tighten that up in that situation. First and 10 at the 44, Kansas. Kansas with a 10-0 lead, second quarter. And Lane just covers over the football 
And he rolls to the 31-yard line. Mortensen and Kemp bring him down after 13 yards. Well, watch Javorski's lane's feet in the hole. That's what they talk about him as a big guy. He's got quick feet. You see his feet moving? He's not trying to be real tricky as far as going right, left, and jig-jagging, but in the hole, his feet move very quickly, and he's got deceptive speed for a big guy, and again, the KU defenders in the secondary tackling this big guy low. Knows where the end zone is. 11 touchdowns as first in the league, second in the nation when it comes to TD scoring. And it is a first to 10 at the 31. McGee. Tackle around the ankles by Kemp. Picks up three yards. Time for a Dr. Pepper game break. Let's check in with Mike Goldberg. They go Wake Forest, one of nine unbeatens remaining in Division I football, looking for their first 6-0 start since 1944. They look good at home. A little trickery here. Nate Morton back to the quarterback, Riley Skinner. Wake leads number 15, Clemson 14-13. Meantime, Auburn has cut the lead. The 10-7, Arkansas still in the lead. Thanks very much. Let's go back here. Second down and seven. The handoff to Goodson. Goodson is stopped at the 22. Maybe he got a little bit more than that. Mortensen makes the tackle. Now Goodson, he's one of those guys where you get the ball in his hands. It could be a huge play anytime. He just got that speed. Watch his acceleration here. A little quick thing, and all of a sudden, boom, right ahead. He's six or seven yards down the field before you know what happened. And that's what you want from a tailback in this offense. Ability to burst through a hole, a small hole, and then get speed on the outside, which we've seen both from Goodson today. So a third and one for Texas A&M. Down 10-0. The ball at the 21 of Kansas. football has the first down across to the 19-yard line Justin Thornton the stopper for Kansas after a two-yard pickup Jaworski sophomore out of Lufkin Texas watch the defense come low here on this guy and he is bulging back over watch it no I'm going the other way <laughs> big guys like that they lean when they go forward they want to get positive yards I remember playing in the NFL against a guy named John Riggins and ran the same way and not fun to tackle those kind of guys because they've always got a good body lane. He's got his name on the stadium walls here. John Riggins, of course, an outstanding player of Kansas. And it's first and ten now for Texas A&M. Oh, hey, you talk about getting low to the ground. I earned him that first down here. And again, flags thrown with McGee trying to run the option. Ball start, 70. Offense, five yard penalty, first down. You know, Bill, you were talking about earlier about Steve McGee. We talked to Les Kenny, the offensive coordinator for Texas A&M. And, you know, he talked about Steve McGee's competitiveness and his leadership ability. And, you know, I remember watching Steve McGee on the field and how he practices and how he talks to guys. Very jovial. He always talk, is always talking, always joking. He's kind of a leader out there. You know, the defense is on the field. He's trying to keep guys loose. And that's just the kind of competitor he is. And you've got a guy like that in your football team. He's going to make for a, for a lot of fun days. First and 15 now, and McGee throws the football to Bennett, and Bennett is brought down at the 17-yard line. Kemp makes the tackle. They pick up six. Martellus Bennett with another reception. Yeah, they're using Martellus Bennett on the outside. I'd really like to see him get up the seam a little bit, get him up the field. He's going to come across and work outside, but I'd like to see him get him up the field and see what he can do in this area of the field here, working away from a linebacker or a safety. Uh, he's got speed and ability, and he can jump, so... Look here, he knows how to jump and get over, get over that tackle. Anthony Webb not able to even touch him or he jumps right over. Second reception of the day for the tight end. It is second down and eight now. Option, McGee. Goodson. Knocked out of bounds. See where they spot the football near the eight, it appears. As Thornton knocked him out. And when you come down the line of scrimmage as a quarterback, you've got to read your keys here. And you're not going to give the lane inside because you got a defensive end there. He outruns the defensive end, but look, you got to pursuit the cornerback. Newton is there. He just goes Goodson around the edge. He's got more speed. Just ran out of real estate. Got another yard here. He might have been able to turn this up for the score. He got the first down, which was the most important thing. And it's first and goal for Texas A&M. Mark it officially at the seven-yard line. 
go with Lane having 11 touchdowns. He's in the game. Ball in motion. And there's Lane. Spins. Well, everybody in the stadium knows this guy's getting the football, right? And you still can't stop him. That's how good he is. I talked about tackling in this ball game. It's going to be very key for Kansas to get in there, wrap up, buddy tackle here. You've got to get to the football. You've got a guy who's 275 pounds, and look at him. You've got to wrap up. Rivera's not able to get his hands on him, and he just keeps those legs churning. Javorski Lane, he is the J-train. That's what they're calling him. He's moving the ball down the field pretty well for him. Second and goal from the two-yard line now. in the backfield along with Alexander and Lane. Lane. Oh, trying to bull his way in. And touchdown Texas A&M. A late signal for the Aggies score. And they're on the board for the first time today as Javorski Lane gets his 12th touchdown of the season. Well, good drive by Texas A&M. Running the ball down the field. Javorski Lane, power football getting inside the KU defense. Offensive line getting just enough penetration there, moving the KU defense out for this score. So Lane on the two-yard run, and that'll bring on Newman for the point after, a senior. And Newman is 12 of 12 in PATs. And it is good. So Texas A&M with Lane pulling his way into the end zone is within three. It's 10-7 with 8.23 to go, second quarter. The more I search for my significance, seems the more I disappear. And I wonder, have I made a difference in anybody's life since? End zone for this Texas A&M team. Yeah, been power running today for him. Javorski Lane, six carries, 30 yards on the day already in the score. So, kind of making his mark here early in this ball game. And the kick. And they'll down it in the end zone and bring it out for the touchback. We'll take a break as well with a 10-7 Kansas over Texas A&M on our Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week. His productivity. Thank you, Emily. First and ten, ball on the 20. As Kansas, with quarterback Adam Barman, Cornish in the backfield. Cornish gets the call. Nice hole for him. Rolls to the 30 and more, and brought down across the 32-yard line. Melvin Bullet making the tackle on 13-yard pickup for John Cornish. And you get some money out of this one too with the block, and you see up front here. You see the hole that John Cornish has to run through. Good job by the KU offensive line moving out the Texas A&M defense to open up that hole and so John Cornish can get going. Cornish officially getting 12 on the carry. He's got six carries, 25 yards today. Husky Lane, six for 30 and a score. And nothing doing this time. Loss yeah. on the play. Warren covering. Yeah, Justin Warren, the middle linebacker for Texas A&M. He's a guy he knows how to play, and he he goes sideline to sideline, and Justin Warren can get back in the backfield and see the linebacker scrape and make this play right here in the backfield. That speed, when you see a hole open, you got to go take it and make a tackle, and shoestring tackle works just fine. Come back and officials make a call here, kind of sorting it out here as both teams look a little confused. See where they spot the football. No, I didn't see any infraction on for that I know of, but uh, we were watching a replay as well, so something may have come up. Shot block, 77 and 61 offense, 15 yard penalty. Will the play clock operator put six seconds back on the play clock? There you have it. Chop block call against Kansas, and now talked about that field position game that was turned around when. Yeah, but uh, was this enforced after the after the play, after the run? 15 yards from 
It'll be first down. Yeah. Well, first down, yeah. nonetheless. Yeah. First down, and here's Barman. He throws it away here. Barman, four of eight for 26 yards. Does have a TD toss today. Mark Mangino looking on with his club now a second down and 26 to go. You know, we talked about it early in this ball game, Bill, for both football teams trying to perhaps stretch the defense, make some bigger plays. And I've seen really for both teams just throwing the ball, you know, horizontally across the field and not trying to make that play down the field yet. Have to see if either one of these teams could try to make a play on the outside. Both cornerback sets of cornerbacks in this ball game are fairly young and experienced, and they feel like you might be able to make some make some plays there. Second and 26 for the Jayhawks, leading at 10-7. This one is complete across to the 22-yard line, and Bullet makes the tackle on Jonathan Lamb, who's been used primarily in the kick return game. He's getting he gets his third reception of the season. Good job in the secondary by Texas A&M, not allowing players to get downfield for the open throw, and he just throw it underneath and come up and make a nice cheer tackle. So third and 21. Clock moving, 7.05 to go here before halftime. Kansas jumping out to a 10-0 lead. Aggies coming back, getting a TD from Lane. Here's Barman going to work. Got some time. And McAnderson couldn't handle it. That ball might have deflected yeah. off a lineman or else it, someone on the front group there. He either came out of Barman's hand poorly and kind of wobbled or did hit a defensive lineman there rushing the football. But nonetheless, incomplete. It's going to bring up fourth down. And good job by Texas A&M of answering here. And going to get the football back probably with pretty good field position. Good contingent of Aggie fans, as always, here in Lawrence. And Kyle Tucker stands inside his own 10 to kick it. And Chad Schrader is the deep man. Schrader sitting fair catch. That is the case. And a &M pretty good field position at its own 38-yard line after a 40-yard punt. We'll be right back with more from Lawrence. Texas A&M with the football after a good defensive stand, and it's first and ten as McGee delivers, and it is complete before the Aggie receiver Franks got out of bounds, and Webb covering on the play. Anthony Webb, a six-foot, 180-pound freshman, 15-yard pickup on this play. Well, remember Reggie McNeil, what he used to do for Texas A&M, get out on the edge, throw the ball accurately. Look at the zip that Stephen McGee has on the football. Very much like a, a Reggie McNeil pass outside on the edge. Throwing the ball very well out there. And Kerry Franks, a capable receiver as well. Fifth reception of the year for Franks. He had a 64-yard TD grab against Louisiana Tech for his only score this year. And it's first and 10 for Texas A&M trying to take the lead now. McGee all day. Now moves about a bit. And it's complete to Chad Schrader. And Schrader... He can stretch that defense, shows you some speed as he wheels out of bounds near the 29-yard line. Holt making the play, 17-yard pickup as Schrader averages 20 yards per reception. Well, watch Yemi Babalow, the offensive tackle. If you can do blocking like that, which is good for a young sophomore tackle, that's what you want to have and gives your quarterback time to throw the football. And he needed it today. Schrader had to go beyond the linebackers. James Holt coming over and knocking him out of bounds, or it was a touchdown for Texas A&M. Aggies move those chains. First and ten on the 29. 6.23 to go in the half. Goodson, the tailback. Alexander gets set on the backfield as well. KU showing pressure. Goodson finds a crease and clips it to the 24-yard line of Kansas before Kemp makes the tackle. He picks up five. First down line is brought to you by Overstock.com, your online source for savings on everything from video games to big screen TVs. When you look at uh, Mike Goodson, number three here for Texas A&M, you know, he kind of reminds me of Jamal Charles from Texas. He's got that speed, that breakaway ability. He runs kind of a vertical style upright, and he's pretty fast. And Yemi Babaloa is out on the sideline, perhaps with a leg injury. We'll, we'll check in on him. 
Goodson, six carries, 30 yards today. Second down and five for AM here. McGee on the option, in trouble, and brought down. Kansas stringing it out and pulling him down. Mike Revere has made a couple of big plays today. The sophomore on a Shawnee Mission, Kansas. And no Yummy Babalo on the left offensive tackle here to go inside. Mike Babalo scrapes from his linebacker spot, and he's one you don't count on in the run game here on the, on the option play. You don't think you have to take your tackle. You got to get that linebacker. You got to get him. He doesn't get him. That a left offensive tackle not able to get him. That was here. Nice play. Good job getting outside. Third down and seven now. Kansas crowd trying to get in there to support their defensive group. All in the 26 yard line. Lane back there with. He in the shotgun. Quick hitter, incomplete. As Pierre Brown couldn't find the handle. It looks like Newman will come on for the field goal attempt now for Texas A&M. He is three of three in the field goal category, 13 of 13 in PATs. They made a move in their kicking game after the first couple of games this season. And a 43-yarder coming up here for Newman. And no good. That ball looked like it got blocked. And Kansas has held on the play. Yeah, maybe Rodney Ham Allen might have got a handle on the hand on this. Number 92 for KU doing a good job of getting penetration. And not allowing the field goal here by Texas A&M. We'll be back after this word from Dr. Pepper, your local Dr. Pepper bottlers. Suzuki motorcycle at ATV dealers. Back to the live. On a first to 10 situation, looking for some running room and finally finds a little bit. Gets it to the 29 before Marcus Thornton tackles for A&M. Picks up three. Aggies trail Kansas 10 7, 4 30 and counting in the second quarter. You know, when running backs from the reverse direction, usually a lot of good things don't happen, bad things happen. John Corner is lucky enough to get forward there and get some positive yards. Glad he didn't take it around the edge. Would have lost four or five, four yards if he tried that one, but good to get up and get three yards there on first down. Brewers wide to the left side. Kansas with a second down and seven. Farmer going downfield and it is complete. Nicely done to Dexton Fields. Fields had the touchdown earlier and Kansas moves the chains out to midfield. You know, kind of a flag route here to Dexton Field. He gets down on the sideline, play action pass inside. Good blocking up front, throws it out there behind the cornerback, kind of stumbles there. Good throw, good catch right on the sideline. It's a 20-yard pickup for the Jayhawks. Fields a sophomore out of Dallas, South Oak Cliff High School. So some Texans coming back to try to put some pain on the Texas A&M Aggies. It is first and 10, officially at the 49 of Kansas. Play action. Barman going deep here. Newton, the closest man to it for Texas A&M, though. Brian Murph, the intended receiver. Yeah, I think you need to do that. I think you need to air it out, throw it down the field at least. You've got to challenge the defense sometimes in a ball game. Adam Barman got plenty of arm strength to get it out there. And just kind of overfired that one. Good coverage in the secondary, actually, by uh, Texas A&M. Mark Mangino's got to decide, hey, let's let's go ahead and challenge some defenses. It opens up your run game. It opens up a lot of different things. If, if the defense doesn't have to worry about the long pass, then they can certainly uh, sneak up and stop your running game, perhaps. Kansas today. Running for 24, passing for 100. AM has run for 86, passed for 74. Cornish, loss on this one. He brought back, they're going to say he was stopped at the 40. They pushed him all the way back to the 32, though. A loss of nine on the play. Yeah, Michael Bennett doing a good job here on the outside. Watch number 11 get up here and just pressure right back inside. He sees John Cornish get the late draw handoff and nothing going there, trying to pull the ball out. Yes, that is the brother of Martellus Bennett. Sophomore out of, I believe, Taylor High School there in Texas. And it'll be a third down and 19. All on the Kansas 40. Barman again to throw. and m trying to pressure. And Lamb with the reception. The 50 and brought down at the 49. His second grab of the day picks up 11 yards for the Jayhawks. 
Now Lamb's just going to work across the field right here by the linebackers and just kind of find a little spot, get past the middle linebacker, Toupe there, and turns north and south, gets three or four extra yards. Not going to get the first down, but gets into uh, Texas A&M territory here. Punting situation. Kyle Tucker comes on to kick. And Chad Schrader is back for Texas A&M. Fourth down and eight for Kansas at the 49 of Texas A&M. Schrader now stays away, and Kansas gets a terrific roll as that ball is down near the seven-yard line. Uh, coming up on our Sonic Halftime Report, check in with Mike Goldberg, Billy Ray Smith, and DeMarco Farr, and top 25 scores and highlights, and don't forget Washington and Southern Cal coming up later on on FSN, a preview of that and more, all on the Sonic Halftime Report. Well, how much time do you think we'll spend talking about Arkansas in that, in that halftime? <laughs> if they're still ahead, <laughs> the Arkansas Television Network. You bet. <laughs> First down and 10 now for the Texas A&M Aggies, and they operate on their own seven. McGee to Bennett, and out of bounds, just shy of the first down near the 15-yard line. Mortensen there covering for KU. Well, he's such an exciting receiver and athlete, uh, Bennett is. I really would really like to see him get up the field and challenge a linebacker or a safety going vertical. Instead of going to the sideline, because I think he can really make some plays downfield. He's got good enough speed, and I think he can work the middle of the field and find some open areas and make some huge plays. He doesn't have the breakaway speed to get away from these cornerbacks that are outside, but I think inside with the linebackers and safeties, he can make some plays in the middle of the field. Third reception today. He's got 16 on the year last year. He started five games. He ended up with 18 receptions for the season, so becoming a bigger part of the Aggie offense. And it's now a second and two for Texas A&M. Clock starting to become a factor. We've got 159 to go before the half. And the Aggies with two timeouts remaining. McGee delivers it to Schrader, incomplete. Talk about the tight ends, Martellus Bennett. They got another book in pretty good one. Is Joey Thomas, number 81. He's the, both tight ends are in a ball game here. They'll go with two tight end formations and they're self-proclaimed the Legion of Doom, those two guys together. Well, they've done a pretty nice job. They're big fellas, too. See Thomas at 6'5", 250, and Ben at 6'7", 248. Third and two now for Texas A&M. See if they'll keep this drive going. McGee. He does as he delivers it, and it is complete, and then out of bounds, the receiver, Irvin Taylor, knocked out near the 25, but that'll move the chains and keep possession for Texas A&M. Holt makes the stop for Kansas. Well, you've got both tight ends here going to work up the field, and then you're going to throw to the outside. You're going to stretch the defense. It's zone coverage here, good tackle on the outside. That's Newton, or at least misses the tackle, and job Irvin Taylor moving a little, a little further down the field, breaking the tackle. Irvin Taylor gets his first reception of the day. That is the sixth receiver of the day that McGee has found to make a connection. And it's first and 10 at the 24 now. Lane beside him. McGee to throw again. A little pump. And look him off. Now keeps the football. And Kansas comes up with a tackle from Mortensen near the 28-yard line to keep McGee from getting a big gainer. Well, last week against Nebraska, this play worked against Anthony Webb, the cornerback, and it doesn't work this time. You see the pump fake here? Watch the pump fake boom right there, and he's trying to get the cornerback to bite on it, but he doesn't bite, so he has to go the other way. Last week against Nebraska, Anthony Webb bit on that play, and he threw it up for a touchdown, so good job by Webb. Hey, burn me once, my fault. Burn me twice. You're not going to play anymore, son. That's right. <laughs> but it learned through mistakes he did on that one. Second down now, and McGee throws the football away. And 1-10 remaining now. The clock stopped. Hurrying the quarterback that time, John Larson, sophomore out of Shawnee Mission. 6'3", 245. John Larson's been out there a lot today. Haven't talked a lot about Paul Comer, the other defensive end, but... Uh, He's been making plays. John Larson getting back in the backfield. A little pressure early in this ball game. Como was a tear in the game we had on FSN against South Florida. It is third down and six now for the Aggies. And timeout, Texas A&M. And 
That will leave them one timeout remaining. With 59 seconds to go in the first half of play, and it's a 10-7 lead in favor of the University of Kansas. Hey, you want to be smart here on third down, have a chance to get this uh, get this first down and keep going. Here, Dennis Franchoni uh, calling a timeout. Our Suzuki student athlete. We honor T.J. Sanders from Texas A&M, a walk-on quarterback, 4.0 in biomedical science, no less. 4.0. Did you ever get to that territory, Bill? That was just a when dream. He, when he began the semester? That was just a dream. <laughs> but that was my average in basketball. <laughs> Certainly not in the classroom. Texas A&M, they put some time back on the clock because of that timeout. They'll make it 110 now that they've got to work with. Jayhawks looking for their 10th consecutive home win, and it is homecoming here at KU. Well, KU, they've still got the three timeouts left, so if they're able to stop Texas A&M on this play, they may, if it's a play inbounds, they may want to stop the clock if they stop them short of the first down and use a timeout for themselves, because they possibly could have great field position coming back and put some points on the board, a possibility of it to let's go down and kick a field goal. Yeah, the Aggies don't get this first down, and Texas A&M's going to say, didn't we want that time off the clock? Everything switches around. Third and six now at the 28-yard line. Empty backfield for the quarterback, Stephen McGee. Coming up, changing the play. Crowd trying to make it as difficult as possible. He got time and throws complete to Bennett, and he spins and goes across midfield, and he is down to the 47-yard line of Kansas before Como makes the tackle, a 25-yard pickup. Well, here's the big guy. Let's get him down the field, see what he can do against the linebackers and safeties. By golly, he's open. Looky there and spins away, makes some yardage. That's the athlete that Martellus Bennett is, and they need to get him the ball down the field and block that more often. First to 10 for the Aggies now, working quickly, and it's complete Taylor. He scampers out of bounds here, picks up a couple, and the clock stops now at 51 seconds, five yards on the reception by Irvin Taylor. We've got an Aggie down on the field on the far 40-yard line, Bill, at the end of the play. I think it's Howard Morrow. I didn't see what happened to Howard at the end of that play, but he's right down on the field for sure. Not a lot of movement. See them talking to him, and Morrow's a sophomore from Keller, Texas. Let's see if we can find out what happened to him. Yeah, watch at the top of your screen here around the 40-yard line. We'll see what happens. You see the coming across the field and making a block. He's just making a block on the linebacker, James Holton. Pretty good collision there. You see his head kind of shaking back and forth on that contact. So as they attend to him, things have gotten quiet here in the stadium, and particularly after uh, what KU fans witnessed last week up in Nebraska with that severe injury that Eric Washington suffered that we were talking about earlier. And good sign here, he is up, and then there's own power goes off the field. So hopefully Morrow will be back quickly. Second down and five is our situation with 51 seconds remaining in the half. And Texas A&M on the 42-yard line of Kansas. Remember, one timeout remaining for the Aggies. McGee. And again, he finds Bennett. And Bennett, they try to strip the football, and they do. And Kansas has recovered the football at the 30-yard line. They gang tackled him, and I believe it was Caleb Blakesley who came up with the recovery. Well, that's one of the things Kansas has not done well this year, get interceptions and take the football away, but this is a good job of tackling. Martell has been trying to get to the sideline, and they strip it out. Good job by James Holt, the linebacker, who's playing this week for Eric Washington. Pulls that ball out. Thornton good pulls it out. There. Blakesley with the recovery, and... As a result, Kansas stops the drive, gets the ball back with 42 seconds to go. Now you had it right, Gary. You can see Bennett thinking, get out of bounds, get out of bounds. And K 
Kansas did the right thing. They all came after it. Now, toss back to Barman, and he is leveled. Barman is leveled back on the 20-yard line as no razzle-dazzle working for Kansas that time. You see Toupe does a good job getting in the backfield there and trying to throw the ball back to the quarterback here. You hand off to Cornish, and then he stops, comes back. You see the New England Patriots run this play all the time with, with Tom Brady, and no success here for KU. Good coverage in the secondary by Texas A&M. Toupe is a guy that originally signed with Utah, went on a two-year mission to the Philippines, and then played at Dixie State Community College. And he's 24 years old, and he made a big play there to end the half as the clock winds down. And Texas A&M heads to the locker room, trailing. It is Kansas with a 10-7 lead. The Jayhawks, a Fields touchdown reception from Barman, a Webb 33-yard field goal, and Lane the other way for the Aggies, a two-yard run. And that's a wrap on the scoring at the half. It is 10-7, University of Kansas, and head coach Mark Mangino is with our Emily Jones. Well, Coach, I remember we talked about it a couple weeks ago. You said you were going to let your kids, you let the whistles go in practice to try and encourage them to continue to strip for the ball, come up with some turnovers. Looks like it paid off today. Yeah, that was a key turnover there. They were moving the ball just before the half, but we stripped the ball and uh, made a good play to stop their drive. Special teams huge for you guys, the block field goal and then the fake punt? Yeah, special teams are important. I told our kids that it would be important, and... You know, we spent a lot of time working on it and it's starting to pay off, but, uh, you know, special teams are important in a close game. Okay. Best of luck in the second half, Coach. And, guys, it's time to go back to L.A., and I understand in the studio you may need some work on something. It is homecoming here in Lawrence, and um, I've got a little bit of uh, parade experience in waving, and I hear that Billy Ray's got a pretty good one, but maybe that Mike and DeMarco might need some work, a little elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist. You think, guys? Uh, indeed, that could be the case, Emily. Thank you very much. That indeed could be the case. Try it out, Billy Ray. Show us. Can you do it? Sure, of course. Everybody, everybody knows, everybody knows the way. way we we'll welcome you into our college football studios <laughs> in Los Angeles. We welcome wow. you to the Sonic Halftime Report. Mike Goldberg, DeMarco Fard, the waving Billy Ray Smith. Well, uh, mm -hmm. you talked on the kickoff show, you talked prior to the kick of our game about the Kansas defense, and Mangino pointed out that they have stepped up. Yeah, I like what they're doing on defense. I like what their defensive line is doing. They're being very disruptive, getting up the field. KU not having to blitz that much, but I like what Texas A&M is doing on offense, running the draws and the action, keeping them uh, stymied on defense. They have a, a very bit. talented quarterback, and so far it's really testing the Kansas defense. But I'll tell you what, I love the way Mark Mangino comes out for homecoming, Fakes the punt, gets the ball down the field, scores a touchdown early. That was a huge thing to get the crowd into the game, get the motion going. I can't picture you in a parade. My kids would be like, who's the scary guy waving in that the would parade? Be, you know what? Are. Could be scary for your alma mater a little bit later. The Washington Huskies are at the Coliseum. It is game two of our FSN College Football Saturday doubleheader. Washington, number two USC from the Coliseum, available in high definition, 3.30 in the east, 12.30 in the west. Number three. Auburn positioning themselves once again for a national championship run. But first, they must hunker down on them hogs. It is all coming. in conference play, and really surprising that Kansas offensively, Bill, has not been able to get anything going. Texas A&M defense played well. Really, the whole story here for Texas A&M, they gave up some field position with a, in the uh, fake field goal, or excuse me, a fake punter in this ballgame led to seven points for the Jayhawks. Yeah, you take a look at the stats, you think the Aggies would be leading. No doubt about it. You take a look at just the rushing yards here for Kansas, only 15 in this ballgame. Everything points to the favor of Texas A&M, yet they still trail in this ballgame. 10 to 7. So it's some one of these things where one of these teams got to come out and do some dominance. I think they need to throw the ball down the field. I've been talking about that more in this half, in the first half, and I think they need to get that going here in the second half. Let's go down to the sideline to visit with Emily Jones, who's got Dennis Franchoni. Guys, thank you here with Dennis Franchione. Coach, you're dominating the numbers, averaging five yards a carry on the ground, uh, 11 first downs to their four, but a couple of big plays on special teams have been the difference in this one. Well, and we've, we've gotten down there and we did, we missed a field goal and then we had the turnover before half. We got to play a little better on offense. Too many penalties, too many things that hurt ourselves right there. Defense didn't play too bad. Everything's happened at that end of the field, so. You know, we got we to gotta find a way to, to change field position when we get pinned down. What was your message to your team in the second half to not get discouraged? It was pretty stern words at halftime. We'll see how they respond. Okay. Thanks, Coach. We do appreciate it. Dennis Franchione, guys, stern words for his team in the locker room at the break. 
All right, thank you, Emily. And you saw Sharp return the football for Kansas out to the 18-yard line. Here's Adam Barman's numbers in that first half, 7 to 13 for 63. Had the TD pass to Dexton Fields. And it's first and 10 at the 18 for the Jayhawks. They lead it here by three. And Cornish with the handoff. And he is down about the 20-yard line, picks up a pair. Yeah, talking about throwing to the tight ends, they need to get the ball to Derek Fine in this offense for Kansas because he's a pretty good receiver inside, a tight end. He's been in the offensive uh, playbook before, and he's got some receptions on the year. Instead of just continually to throw it outside, you need to get your tight end in the system, and they've done that for Texas A&M late in the second quarter, and I think KU has that opportunity to do so as well. And uh, if you're wondering about the quarterback spot here for KU, it's Adam Barman, started this ball game, his third start for the year. Kerry Meyer not playing this ball game, at least so far, Bill, is a, is a He's available, I think, as a backup role if need be. Second down and eight, and Cornish is stopped as he dives forward to the 25. Yeah, Meyer had the shoulder injury in the uh, Toledo game, and as a result, uh, he has uh, been sidelined. And they said there was no reason to start him because they thought he was not strong enough and he would fatigue if he had to go the whole game, but he is available if needed. But Barman has done uh, just enough to keep this team going. And last week, he had a disastrous start and an unbelievable finish there. Well, you can see Kerry Meyer on the sideline giving signals to his team. And at the least, he get his arm up. And he threw some balls in practice this week. He's just not strong enough. And Coach Mangino said he's not durable enough to go for a football game. Third down, and the ball is complete to Jonathan Lamb as Justin Warren makes the tackle. That'll move the chains, though, for the Kansas Jayhawks. And get the receivers inside between those linebackers and make you a good throw inside the middle of the field. And good job by Adam Barman looking over the defensive lineman there. Justin Warren having to make the stop. Rue checks in the lineup for Kansas. First and 10 at the 33 of Texas A&M. We're worried about how concerned how these teams will react after their heartbreaking losses last week. A&M struggled and KU jumped out to a 10-0 lead. It's 10-7 now and a strong start to the second half as Cornish breaks a tackle and turns in a field. He's at the 50, the 40, the 30, and Cornish is bowled out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. That'll bump that per average carry, a 47-yard tote for Cornish. Great job of blocking up front. And watch him pick his holes. He gets in behind his lineman there, goes outside. He sets up that block. He sets up the block here. And then to the outside, good job by John Cornish of picking up the blocks and take a good look from the top here. You see what we're seeing. John Cornish gets around the edge. Good job finding the holes and allowing the blockers to make space for him. Cornish, senior out of New Westminster, British Columbia, the Canadian now. Has him set up first and 10 at the 18 of Texas A&M. And McAnderson slips as Justin Warren is there to cover on the play for the Aggies. Warren coming in as their leading tackler on the year. Four-year starter for Texas A&M. Well, Texas A&M allowing 113 yards a game. That's eighth in the Big 12 as far as rushing defense is concerned. And John Cornish ripped off a pretty good one in the first half, allowing only 15 yards rushing in this ball game. So. Kansas coming out here running the football early in this drive. Second down and 11. Barman. Looking on the sideline for Rue and Henry. Bullet over there covering for Texas A&M and a third down and 11 now coming up for KU. Take a look at the protection up here. You see your center pulling out and Bob Whitaker trying to the guard they're trying to get some space on the outside and good coverage in the secondary by AM. Nowhere to throw that football, so he throws it to the sideline. Stressing to him the, the turnover situation that, hey, our guy or nobody. And that might have been a case right there where it took off on him a little bit, but he didn't want to give up six the other way. All right, and in the red zone, a lot of problems they've had turning that football over. You don't want to self destruct there. Third and 11, they come after Barman, and it is incomplete. Threw right to the mid midsection of Red Bryant. Yeah, Big Red almost had him one there. That's one where he's going to say, watch the tape, says, man, why didn't I catch his football? He's probably going to do some more ball drills at the end of practice. Defensive line coach there. It's going to be a little boot pass here. going to come around, and Red Bryant just goes to the outside. Going to get to the quarterback, and pressure there in front of him, and he gets it, hits him in the hand. I thought it hit him right in the midsection, but... Good job by Texas A&M pressuring the quarterback. Lavazzo are in there on him. That brings on Webb. He connected earlier for a 33-yard field goal attempt. And Webb sets up here on a 36-yarder this time. He's hit his last five this season. And Webb certainly long enough. 
And it is good. So KU takes the opening drive, gets a big run from Cornish. Things stall, and they tack on a field goal from Scott Webb. It is 13-7 Kansas. opportunity of the second half. Bill Langer, reasons. Emily Jones with you here in Lawrence. This one, booted by Webb. Go out of the end zone and a touchback. It'll be first and 10 at the 20. And our Michelin scoring drive, eight plays, 63 yards, 257 is what it required. And Webb capping it off with a 36-yarder. Well, Dennis Franchoni talking about saying stern words to his football team at halftime. And not really what you want to have happen to have KU come out, take that opening third quarter drive and drive down for a field goal put points on the board yeah, one big play yeah, yeah. for the 49 yard run and as he mentioned Emily the, the defense for the Ags for the most part has played very well let's see if his offense heard those words at halftime first and 10 from the 20 of AM. and Stephen McGee to Taylor for 21 pick of a yard and McGee hitting 12 of 21 in the first half. Our first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com with live customer service and an online price guarantee. Shopping online has never been easier. That's Overstock.com. Second and nine for Texas A&M. Schrader split to the left with Lane in the backfield beside the quarterback. And they jumped. Ball start. 77 offense, five yard penalty, second down. This was the problem early in the game for AM with the penalties. Yeah, early on in the ball game, they shot themselves in the foot, hurt, hurt them field position wise, and they moved backwards. And good job of. Uh, Kansas putting the pressure on him here early in this third quarter. Second down and 14. Ball on the 16. McGee with a long count. Great protection. And to Schrader. And Chad steps out of bounds near the 20. Three yard line picks up six. Joe Mortensen there to make the tackle. Good job by McGee, just looking and surveying the field and checking down to an outside receiver. Nobody covering, just a zone coverage by KU and breaking up and making the tackle on the outside. Traders a guy who can stretch the field. I think they need to get him try to get down the field in this KU defense. They have yielded some big plays. Four plays last week, over 35 yards in that ball game against Nebraska. I'm a surprise they haven't tried that today. Third down and Eight. They were five of nine in third down conversions in the first half for AM. McGee to Taylor. Knocked away. Anthony Webb, the freshman from Glen Heights, Texas, was there. And that's good tight coverage on the outside, Webb. It would have been kind of hot and cold from the cornerback spot for KU this year, but on the outside, he's going to break inside here with the receiver and good job of timing it. Actually, might have got there just a touch early right there in front of Irvin Taylor. And no call there on the play. So Brantley will go back to punt it away now. Brantley averaged 33.7 on his three kicks. Murph, he did not fair catch it. 50, 45, and he is knocked out of bounds. They ran right by him. Maybe anticipating that he was going to fair catch. Not the case. Brantley's the one that knocked him out of bounds. And KU has good field position with a 13-7 lead. As the Jayhawks are going to take over. See where they spot the football here. Around the 38-yard line, it appears. A 21-yard return. Well, sometimes when you run down on kick coverage and punt coverage, it's hard to determine whether or not the receiver returner has actually put his hand up the call for it and it's a sunny day here sometimes you'd actually see a kick returner perhaps chilling his eyes but no fair catch on that call and uh, Brian Murph takes the ball right back at uh, the Texas A&M he took one back for a touchdown against Northwestern State earlier this season and on first to ten KU had to control it on the ground and 
to about the 35 yard line a pickup of three where Bryant makes the tackle on Cornish. I think big Henry Smith inside they're helping out as well the big defensive tackle 307 pounder in there junior college transfer coming in and making a high tackle on John Cornish who had the big run to set up that field goal early in the, the last drive out there for KU. Second and seven now. Barman has Cornish shift over to his right. Gives to Cornish. He's brought down by Michael Bennett. The 35 yard line. Kansas coming in here three and two, looking for the first Big 12 win. And of course, AM at four and one, losing last week to Texas Tech. And as tight as things appear in this league, every game becomes critical as you hope to get to the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game down the road to Kansas City. Tending to tell us Bennett there. Stretch him out. That's a lot of stretch. Yes. <laughs> Third and seven now for the Jayhawks. Barman got by two defenders. And incomplete. Well, he had one out there. Chance to get a play here after breaking down the, the defense here, trying to get him get outside. Adam Barman thought he's going to be tackled there in the backfield, but he's trying to throw the ball to Murph outside. The ball just a little bit high. He gets over his head. Brock Newton covered in the play. And Barman is now 8 for 17 in the passing game, 71 yards and a touchdown. Well, he's got to wonder why you want to punt here. You're at the 35 yard line. You might as well just put your defense out there in play. Surprising that Mark Mangino is going to do this and perhaps going to take the penalty here. Let the clock run down and back himself up to punt. I think I'd go for it on fourth down here. Tucker's great field position. Let your defense play. I mean, Gary Tucker's had nine punts inside the 20 this year, and they're hoping, obviously, he can dial one in here. Delay of game, number 15, offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Give him a little bit more room to kick it. You know, sometimes in this situation, the punter kind of negates everything you do there, and you they'll punt it into the end zone. Yep. Be about a 40 yard punt if it goes into the end zone here. He's done a good job of stopping short a couple of them earlier today in this ball game. Stands on the 45 yard line and it's fourth down and seven. Tucker trying to cough and corner it. And, and he does. Wow. They're going to mark that. He's going to have a 39 yard. Let's see. They step up to the five. It's always difficult to find out exactly where they're going to judge that ball went out. Five yard line, it appears, as AM in a big hole. 808 to go in the third quarter. They trail 13 7 to Kansas. That's the good news. Aggie fans, though, are concerned. The ball is on the five. And Jaworski Lane rolls out before he's tackled by Tlaib. And a penalty flag thrown by the umpire here. Holding 70 flight. Half the distance, first down. Cody Wallace, the culprit. One of a mention all conference pick from a year ago. A little bit more about that Southern Cal Washington matchup. Moody and Smith for. So then Cal, the passing tandem, is he has stand back for UW. All coming up later on FSN. Mark Mangino electing to play the field position game here and doing a good job with this punter, pinning Texas A&M back inside their own five yard line. Five yards of carry from three different fellas. First and 12 now. McGee out of his end zone. And it is dropped. Kerry Franks, the junior from Orange, Texas. Yeah, back to that rushing graphic. Really, Texas A&M, they lead the Big 12 Conference in rushing per game at 218 yards a game. But oddly enough, they don't have one rusher who is in the top 10 rushing. So they spread that around. And you saw the graphic supported that. And here's just a drop ball on the outside. So nothing happening right for Texas A&M now. Second down in, in Longville at their own two-yard line. Again, out of their end zone. Aggies is trying to a little field position out of this deal right now. Ball on the three, second and 12. 
Lane in the backfield with the quarterback, McGee. Here they come. And Schrader with the reception. And across the 10-yard line to the 11. Need to get to the 15, though, and an eight-yard pickup before Tlaib stops him. Good execution here by Texas A&M. It's a zone blitz by KU. And see the defense getting back and throws over to the receiver on the outside, Schrader. A little chance now, third down and something manageable. Four yards or so. Third and four is what they call it. With 6.57 and the clock ticking here in the third quarter. Kansas with a six-point lead. Aggies, third and four. Thomas goes in motion. McGee looks that way. Como coming on, and the pass is incomplete. Paul Como nearly had a sack in the end zone of Stephen McGee. Well, good job on the outside. Combo's going to be at the bottom of your screen. Kind of a delayed rush here. Nobody picks him up. Javorski Lane gets out of the backfield, and Stephen McGee trying to throw it to him outside, overthrows him, and just the timing not there. So KU is going to hold here and force a punting situation. You see the pressure on Stephen McGee, and he overthrows his big tailback. So Kansas got the great field position with the punt that was out of bounds at the five. They hold here, and it's fourth down and four. And Brantley out of the end zone, a high snap, and it is out of the end zone. And disaster continues in special teams for Texas A&M. Oh, my goodness. And a safety, and we'll see who they credited to. A two-point situation for Kansas. Well, they'll credit that to team, Bill, on that situation. This Nenner snaps it right over the punter's head. Two points for KU. Great field position. And the mistake by Texas A&M. We'll be back after this word from Dr. Pepper. Just executed against the Texas A&M punt and return team. So those things all work in the favor of KU today. And the kick, Rue, the deep man. And this one is taken at the 38-yard line. And fine on the reception there. Let's send it down now to Emily Jones. Well, guys, a little bit earlier, you talked about the absence of senior linebacker Eric Washington. The young man who went down with a neck injury in the third quarter of the Nebraska game last week. And the news is good today. He was at practice yesterday. We saw him walking around, visiting with his teammates, but it was not always so good. He spent a couple of nights in the hospital in Lincoln, a couple of nights in the hospital here in Lawrence, and a couple of nights in the hospital in Kansas City. Finally released yesterday. And Mark Mangino is taking this very personally. He's going to send Washington to an orthopedic surgeon by the name of Brock Schnabel in Oklahoma City. He is the team orthopedic surgeon for the Oklahoma Sooners. He says that he has worked on Mangino's wife. He's worked on Mangino's son, and he trusts this guy that he's the best in the business to take a look at Eric, make sure that everything is okay. But one message that Eric did want to send out today is that he is doing fine. He's watching the game at home, and he wants all the KU faithful to know that he greatly appreciates all their thoughts and prayers. All right, thank you, Emily, and that second it up here. Watch out, Cornish, who had a big run on the last drive, rambles to the 30-yard line on this tote before Brock Newton makes the tackle. KU, tell you what, with 5.47 going to third, they're starting to take control of this football game. Watch the patience here by Cornish. The play's supposed to go to the right, but he sees a whole backside. Good job of everybody on the offensive line just staying with their blocks and allowing Cornish to pick a hole. He gets him to the second level of the defense uncontested. And Cornish, 97 yards now. 19 pickup there, 14 carries, three more yards. He's got his fifth 100-yard game. And Cornish this time gets a run to the 18. See where they spot it, where Thornton makes the tackle. He picks up six, and that does put him over the 100 mark. Yeah, when well, you got a tailback that's going to consistently give you yardage on the ground, which is what John Cornish has given KU, it means a couple of things. It means you got a good running back and you got a good group of offensive linemen that are consistently getting their blocks and giving you some holes to run through. Well, the stern words that Coach Fran delivered, not stern enough. Nine yard, nine hundred yard rushing days for his career. They're moving up is pretty good company, then. Second down and four. Cornish 
smelling it again, and Cornish rolls to the 13-yard line, a 12-yard gain before Newton makes the tackle for Texas A&M. Good job by the quarterback, Barman. He reads it. Hold it right there. If you see everybody go inside, or go outside, rather, looking for the quarterback around, it's a zone replay, and he's able to put that ball in there. He's looking at the defensive line, and they go outside. Cornish comes inside. Look at the blocking downfield. Everyone is staying on their blocks. You got wide receivers getting downfield, making blocks like that. You're going to have explosive running plays, and John Cornish, the beneficiary of that blocking today. Sets up another first and ten. This one at the 13-yard line. Cornish. Still on his feet. Forward progress stopped just inside the 11-yard line, though, and Misi Toupee make the tackle a two-yard pickup. I'm just trying to be a workhorse out there, giving the ball to him and protecting that football. And talked about it a couple of weeks ago when he got into a hole. You see him when he gets up in traffic, he covers that ball up with both arms. He's very smart, very intelligent runner, not one to let fumbles occur. And when you have second effort plays like that, sometimes that ball pops out. John Cornish did a good job of holding on to it here. Cornish, a career high, 31 carries, 145 yards in the loss to Nebraska last week. He's up to 17 for 116 yards here today. Second down and eight. Barman delivers across the middle, got deflected. Wow, the linebacker, Missy Toupe, almost had him on there, Bill, coming across from his weak side. He was reading Adam Barman the whole way. Stepped in front of that, almost got up for it. If you can take a look at the linebacker, watch Toupe here, going to come right here, going to see the quarterback. Good break on the football. He just doesn't make the play. Looking for fields again. And it's third down now and eight. And a timeout for Kansas with 3.42 remaining in the third quarter here at Memorial Stadium in Cabisto Field as the Jayhawks lead it 15 to 7. And I tell you, the field position game, the decision that Mark Mangino, hey, I, I questioned it early on. I said, hey, they're at the 35-yard line. At fourth down, you decide to punt the football. You take the penalty. They, and they did. And the punter executed, got the ball inside the five-yard line. From there, it just all kind of self-destructed for Texas A&M. They couldn't get out of their end zone. The bad snap resulted in a safety. And now here they are again after the, 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 uh, Excuse me, the kickoff on the after the safety and great field position here, knocking on the door again. On well, Adam Barman trying to do a heck of a job here. This is a guy that was all but forgotten about when they decided to go with freshman Kerry Meyer. He gets hurt, takes him to the win over South Florida. Barman then goes to Nebraska, was was just nightmarish to start the game, then went absolutely nuts second quarter on up in Lincoln. Well, he just got confident. I think when he got his throws in there, he could make the play down the field. You see Murphy getting any action, and then just kind of just finding his tight end, and everyone across the board was kind of picking it up here. This is a fun game to watch if you watched it on FSN last week, and KU really hung in there, but in the end, it was Nebraska that finished them off, and they wanted to come out today and kind of a revenge, avenge that type of a loss in that situation. Two overtime losses for KU this year. Uh, it's kind of tough to swallow, but uh, those are the only two defeats they've had. Now a chance in this ball game to have your first Big 12 victory of the season. Barman threw the 405 last week, and the KU, instead of thinking about what could and should have been, is looking at, hey, what can happen? And they got a chance to take control of the football game here because they're up one score right now, but it's a third and eight, the ball on the 11-yard line. The momentum is certainly all KU in the second half. See if they capitalize. Barman going for six and incomplete. Well covered was Lamb. Well, that's that pass that you want to throw to the back corner of the end zone. And we actually talked to Mark Mangino about that play at practice yesterday. Is that you've got to throw it back here. Last week in that ball game against Nebraska, he underthrew that same throw and it was intercepted. Negated an opportunity for points on the board, but this is where you want to throw it. Throw it after the back corner of the end zone. So if your receiver can't catch it, nobody else can. And well done by by uh, Adam Adam Barman there. And Webb comes on trying for the field goal, his third attempt of the day. He's hit his first two. This is a 28-yarder, and he is good again. So Webb hits his third field goal, a 28-yarder. Now becomes a two-score game, and it's 18 to seven with 3.34 to go in the third quarter. Kind of a workmanlike drive going down the field. Good job by John Cornish. Continue that running running streak that he has over, over 100 yards, 116 yards on the day so far, again on the ground, and taking it to Texas A&M. Nope, nothing really happened in the first half for KU. Offense-wise, they just had good field position, but today, now in the third quarter, coming out, really establishing field position and moving the ball pretty well. Well, and for Texas A&M, how frustrating. And they've given up a couple of big plays, but their defense, for the most part, has been very stout. And 
You take a look at the Michelin scoring drive, eight plays and 43 yards. Cornish had a big pickup in that stretch, and that all came from poor field position by having a kickoff from the 20 after the safety. Yeah, the short fields are hard for a defense to deal with. You go out there continually on a short field, and not always are you going to be able to slow a team down and stop. And KU is being workmanlike offensively, bring the ball down the field, short throws, and run the ball pretty well with, with John. So Webb with the kickoff here. And Franks will let this one sail, and it goes out of the end zone for a touchback, and will be out to the 20-yard line for Texas A&M for a first and 10 here for the Ags. Bill and Gary Reasons, as well as Emily Jones with you here on FSN, as Texas A&M takes over first and 10 at its own 20-yard line. We're glad to welcome special guest to the booth as Gail Sayers. Steps in here with us. It's homecoming. Good to see you again. Gary. How are you doing? Bill Land along with Gary Reasons. Glad to have you aboard here. Thank you. Enjoying the game so far? Very much so. Kansas is winning. Yeah, you're <laughs> old Jayhawk. You got to get it like that, huh? The Kansas Comet. And it is first and 10. The ball on the 20 yard line. And McGee is sacked for a loss on the play of about four. Mike Rivera, boy, he's having a banner day. The middle linebacker for KU's been all over the field. I'm coming here, Mr. Sayers. What do you think about this festivities and coming back here to your alma mater? Well, I think it's great, and, and I'm so happy to see all the students on the in the blue T-shirts. Yeah. It's amazing. When I was playing here back in the in the 60s, uh, students didn't come to the game like they're doing today. But now, you know, we're, the team is building back up uh, to be a championship team. Second down and 14 now for Texas A&M. McGee. Got Lane and Alexander in the backfield, and he rolls out again. To Taylor, and he's got it at the 22-yard line. And Bill makes the tackle, gain of six. Now that's a hard throw. It's a long one to make, and Gail, you've probably seen quarterbacks make that throw before, but... No, it's kind of good effort here so far by KU to start this third quarter. They came out in the first half, not a whole lot going, but it looks like they're getting things going pretty well here. Well, I, I think they had, you know, four or five first and tens, uh, you know, in the first half. But, you know, Texas a and got a good football team. Sure. And they had to score, and they did. Now Texas a and is behind by, by a couple of scores, and hopefully Kansas can hold on. Dale Sayers, our special guest here in the booth. Third and eight now. This KU crowd starts roaring as McGee back to throw. And... Gets it to Goodson, and Goodson has got the first down as Goodson gets across the 30 to the 33-yard line, and Caleb Blakesley makes the tackle, but 11-yard pickup, and A&M maintains possession. Well, Bill, there's a flag on the field. It's in the backfield for, for a Texas A&M. I don't know if it's going to be a hold, and a helmet actually came off. I think it's Yemi Babaloa's uh, helmet came off. See what the officials sort out here on the play. Yeah, you're talking about the crowd here. The facilities that have gone on and the facilities race that's going on around the country, particularly in the Big 12, is absolutely amazing. You used to be an athletic director. You kind of know all about that. Are you, are you surprised at uh, how unbelievable everything is as far as the facilities? Well, you know, most football powerhouses in, in the Big 10 and the Big 12, they're all about the same. But then it, it boils down to facilities. You know, where can I go and maybe build myself up to play at the next level. And so you, you look at Texas, you look at uh, Nebraska, you look at Oklahoma, you look at some of these places, and they are unbelievable. And so Kansas has to compete. If we can't compete with those programs, we will never have a good a winning football program. It's either jump in or get left behind. That's right. Yeah. Well, they're certainly getting it done here, that is for sure. What are your thoughts on uh, Coach Mangino and what he's been doing over the last four or five years here? Well, I, I think he's doing a great job. I really do. I think we're probably four or five players away from having a real good football program. Third down and eight right now for the Aggies, or the first and ten for the Aggies, I should say, with the ball on the 37-yard line. And Goodson cuts it upfield, 45. And not trying to get out of bounds, ends up stepping out, though, near the 45 of Kansas where Justin Thornton makes the tackle, but a 25-yard pickup for the freshman. Yeah, I talked about explosive ability. That's what Mike Goodson brings to this football team. Texas A&M gets him in, inside on the trap play, and this takes it to the outside. And kind of got that speed that he used to have, my friend. No, he's good, good little runner. He really is. <laughs> but, you know, we, we talk about our program. You know, uh, we are a little behind Texas and Oklahoma and Nebraska in, in facilities. And Covisco did a great job. In 
get us, us to, to build another facility. Yeah, and they'll be moving all of their football operations over here yes. with construction starting soon as uh, yeah, it has uh, been split up. They had a groundbreaking yesterday. Our, our guys, we actually tried to pull the TV truck in a little early, and they said, no, we need to finish up this groundbreaking right. ceremony before they can get in there. But it, it will get, you know, add a... It will add a lot to our program, and you know we'll be then on par to these other big schools. And when we, uh, you know, recruit that good athlete, he can see that you know we're trying to do something. Yeah, where do you make your home now, and what are you up to? Well, I, I live in Chicago, and uh, I'm in the computer business. Been in the computer business for the last 25 years, and, and things are going very, very well. Glad to have you here with us today. And what a great day for college football! It's first and 15 now, and the ball on the 44. McGee with the option. He's going to keep it. The 30 for McGee and hit hard. And Webb making the stop. That'll move the chains for Texas A&M. So they're trying to answer back after some of the years they've had in the special teams category. Steve McGee on the option. The replay here just comes down around the edge. And watch Alan Webb from the outside. Number 20. Give him a pop. Right there. That's... Pretty firm tackle. He should have fumbled that ball. <laughs> yeah, go for, he's going for the football. That's what I think he's trying to get out, knock it out. Uh, he's a good running quarterback. He really sure is. is. He coming in, averaging 5.8 per carry. Our second leading rusher. It's first and 10 now. And Goodson. He cuts it up. 15, 10. And then is brought down inside the five-yard line by Anthony Webb. As Goodson picks up 25 yards, he's now got 79 yards on the day on just eight carries. Doing it pretty quick. I talked about him looking like Jamal Charles, and he really does look like him as far as when he makes explosive moves here. He gets through the hole and knows what to do with it. Go north and south. Don't get too fancy, but just get it out there. And like Charles, he holds it in his left hand. So it's kind of why he looks like him to me, the kid from Texas, Jamal Charles. He's, he's good, good player. He sure is. It's Mike Goodson. First and goal to go from the three. Lane, who had the earlier touchdown, gets the call here. He's got 12 scores on the year. Pushes forward for a yard or so before Rodney Allen makes the tackle. That'll wrap up this uh, third quarter. Again, we appreciate you coming by. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Congratulations once again on just an unbelievable career. Thank you. Dale Sayers here with us, former Kansas great. And I'm a Chicago Bear fan, so there's a real prejudice well, there. I was an original Chicago. I was born in Chicago, man. <laughs> I watched you guys play. And guess what? I have to tell you this. When I was a little guy, I had the original Huffy uniform. And guess what? It was number 40. It was a Chicago Bear uniform. I wore that proudly. Somehow you <laughs> didn't pick up his speed, though. No. <laughs> I never could. <laughs> All right. Stay with us here. Thanks again, Gail. Yeah. We played three. It's 18-7 Kansas on our Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week. but it is KU with the lead, and the Aggies threatening here as they have it on a second down and goal at the two-yard line. They start the fourth quarter. Full backfield. Riley in motion and cuts back behind the quarterback, McGee. They fake to lane. McGee, and he is in. Uh, the signal is definitely a touchdown yes, touchdown. On the outside. Had to wait for just a moment. Stephen McGee with a touchdown, and McGee gets his second rushing touchdown of the year. And the Aggies come right back after looking like they were in dire straits. Yeah, a little bootleg here, naked bootleg, going to outrun the defense here. You see Tlaib coming inside. He doesn't know if he's going to throw it to the tight end or not. And good job by Stephen McGee racing to the pylon and getting it inside the end zone. Texas A&M possibly going to go for two here, Bill. Try to cut this down to a, a one-score margin. I'll give them the opportunity to uh, tie it up with a field goal. So they'll go for the deuce. Alexander and Goodson, the backs behind McGee. Schrader split right, wide right. McGee again keeps the football and does not get it. He got crunched about the two. Paul Como leading the way. It was a five-point margin. Very good. good job in the secondary that time by Jerome Kemp on the outside for KU, not allowing the pitch to, to develop. So Steve McGee has to take it inside to try to get something going, and good job of tackling inside. And 
Steve McGee with his touchdown here in his ball game has got uh, Texas A&M back into this football game. So they're down one score and good camera work there, fellas. And here he is trying to get the ball into the end zone here. You see the pitch. Jerome Kemp takes that pitch away, so he has to turn it up inside. And too many blue shirts for Steve McGee to negotiate. So the Aggies with two touchdowns to Kansas one, but KU with three field goals and a safety. We've got the score of 18-13. Fourth quarter, just underway. He's scoring on the first play. And Texas A&M has Matt Zafanski is set to kick it off here for A&M. It is taken as Rue tries to go forward across the 20 to the 22, maybe the 23 yard line where they mark it. And Franks makes the tackle 17 yards on the return. Well, I think for, for KU, you're going to probably see a steady dish here of John Cornish, a chance to run the football some more. And they haven't tried to get the ball down the field too much today. Just Playing in the premier, they look like they want to get first downs and take this late into this ball game to possibly win the football game. Yeah, the first downs in this game, Gary, 15 to 8 AM. Yeah. And it's been that kind of afternoon. To the 25-yard line as Thornton makes the tackle on Cornish. In this situation, field position is all key, and you want to hold on to that football when you're in tight quarters, as John Cornish has done today. So you get a little bit on first down, second down situation now. Yeah, kind of a good example today of KU avoiding the turnovers, and even though they haven't been explosive in getting touchdowns, they got the lead, whereas AM has made more mistakes, even though they've had the big number advantage in the stats. This one is incomplete. And first attempt to throw to Derek Vine, their tight end, who's working on the inside linebacker, Tupe. He works away from him. Ball's a little bit outside. Big third down for KU. It really is. I think that they, you know, if they can get this third down and keep this uh, little momentum going. So early in this fourth quarter, plenty of time for both teams to you know, have a couple of possessions still. But uh, this is one of those things where the worst thing you do is make a mistake, throw an interception or or a negative play, it'd be okay to come out and not turn this into a first down and punt on fourth. Barman, he delivers, and Henry breaks a tackle and has the first down and much more as he heads to the 45-yard line, a pickup of 20. Marcus Henry, the junior out of Lawton, Oklahoma. Well, nice play design, Bill. You got everybody clearing it out on the top. You can see these guys come out, and then Henry's going to come across right here. Little crossing route, just gets into a zone there. Just needs about six or seven yards for the first down, but gets a big, big first down there for KU now up to the 45-yard line. And a first to 10 there. And Barman is now 10 of 22 for 96 yards in a score. And well, not all the passing yardage are his in this ballgame. Yeah. Hunter's got 48 passing yards. That's Kyle Tucker on the fake punt. Here's another completion for Barman, and he goes to McAnderson, where Bullet makes the stop for Texas A&M at the 47-yard line. Yeah, they've shown that they have the confidence in McAnderson to throw him the ball out of the backfield. He's caught uh, a couple of balls here today already, so he's done a pretty good job, and he was the recipient of the fake punt. Uh, he was the blocking fullback on the fake punt and made the big play there to bring him down for their first score. His third reception now for McAnderson. He only had one coming in. Junior from right here in Lawrence. Second down and eight. Warren makes the tackle on John Cornish. Cornish picks up four more. Yeah, I'm kind of partial to linebackers, and Justin Warren's one of those guys that I like to watch play. Number 10 for Texas A&M, the middle linebacker there. When you can read your keys like he does and slide down. You're going to make a lot of tackles. You can see the numbers that he has in his career as the active Big 12 leader. Guy gets around the football. They leave him on the field, Bill, in all situations. He's that kind of a player. They don't have to take him off because of pass coverage, and they uh, they like his leadership out there and certainly does a great job for Texas A&M. Third down and four for Kansas now. Barman incomplete. Fields couldn't hang on. He was covered well. 
Toupee again was there. Yeah, now the field position game comes into play again. You're going to bring your punter out there, who's done a tremendous job so far in this ball game of pinning Texas A&M back deep inside their 10-yard line, have a chance to kind of leg one out here inside, just inside the 50-yard line on Texas A&M side around the 49. So have a chance for your punter to kind of air it out and hopefully uh, get him back there once again. Tucker has averaged 41 yards a kick on his four punts. Chad Schrader, the deep man. And takes the fair catch inside the 15-yard line. And timeout here in Lawrence with our score 18-13 Kansas, 11-59 remaining. Break. It is now first and 10 for the Texas A&M Aggies. And McGee wants to throw it. He does nearly intercepted a diving attempt that time by Aqib Tlaib. He's got one of the KU three interceptions on the year. Well, Aqib Tlaib has man coverage on Schrader on this whole play, and he takes him all the way across the field, and he knows what's going to happen because this ball's trying to be trying to be thrown by McGee all the way back across the field. You see Tlaib and Schrader come to the right side of the field, and watch the effort here. The ball's overthrown, obviously, but the only one who has a chance to get it is Aqib Tlaib. Let's wait. We got... Oh, Emily. Second down and 10. Ball on the 13. And 47 to go in the ball game. McGee to Taylor. Dives across the 20. The 21 yard line. Anthony Webb there picks up eight yards. Irvin Taylor, who had just one reception on the season coming in. A little cushion down here at the bottom of the screen. Webb gets back off a little bit, and then he throws underneath to Taylor. Still a third manager situation and a chance for Texas A&M to keep this, uh, get a first down and keep moving here. Taylor and Bennett each have five receptions today. Trader four for the Aggies. McGee is 17 of 30 for 162 yards. No interceptions, no touchdowns. He has one for a score. It's third and two. McGee in trouble. Still running and incomplete. He had Borson breathing down his neck. Guys, I want to clarify one thing right fast. Right. The kind folks at Jayhawk Beverage and Johnsonville Brats did provide them, but I went and got them. Okay? Oh, the bratwurst. Yes. I went and got them in search of the in the vast tailgating nation here in Lawrence. <laughs> I found located the brats and I brought them all the way up to you. you. You know I can't do anything without getting full credit for it. So I'm just holding up. Thank you, Emily. But the truck is not impressed. Therefore, no off camera time for you until they get their brought worst. <laughs> it is fourth and two and here's the kick. And across the 45 yard line as Murph Brings it out to the 48-yard line, tackled by Brandon Leone, and a 44-yard kick. We'll be right back with more 18-13 Kansas. Field position. It'll be first and ten from their own 48 after the nice punt return by Murph. Yeah, and Kansas had great field position today. They've done a good job punting the football. And defense has answered, stopping Texas A&M, and they've had to go the long field. So Murph fumbles the football after the reception. The Aggies pounce on it. It is A&M football. Well, those are the kind of mistakes that Texas, excuse me, that Kansas has made this season. Turnovers at inopportune times kind of plagued them there. You see two paid pulling the ball back and see on the outside here. Good tackle there. Good job of fumble recovery. Missy Tupe pulled it in for Texas A&M. See Murph there gets gets contacted on the outside. And now the Yankees will take possession. That's how quickly this game could turn. Danny Gore calls the fumble for Texas A&M there. Good play. So now they've got great field position to get going once again. And it's first to 10 at the 43 of the Aggies. Bennett goes in motion and a handoff. Goodson, he was key in their last touchdown drive. The flag is thrown. McClinton makes the tackle on the play. 
Goodson 79 yards rushing prior Outside, to that run. 98 defense, lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty, still first down. Yeah, I got to get Paul Combo for lining up offsides on the right side here. Both teams are averaging 5.4 yards per play. Aggies have run for 143, passed for 162. KU with a total of 263 yards to AM's 305, and it's first down and five. McGee. Brought down from behind. Who else but Mike Rivera? He has just been sensational today as Rivera again comes up with the tackle and a loss of a yard on the play. You know what I see when I see Mike Rivera? I don't know what his 40 time is, and I bet it's probably not great, but he's a guy who's a football player, goes to the football and can close, and that's what you want to do as a linebacker. You want to step up there, and when you see the ball, smell it, go get it, and that's what he's done today. Now, football player is what you see. Yeah, exactly. That's a football player, and Mike's having a good day. Second down and six. Thomas, the guy in motion here. McGee. And incomplete. Tlaib had a shot at an interception, and the intended receiver was Chad Schrader. Well, I tell you, the quarterback here is going to look at this play after the ball game and say, hey, I should have thrown it to my big tight end, Joey Thomas, who's down the middle of the field. Nobody is there. Watch Thomas going to come right here and Guess what, folks? If he throws the football to him, it's probably a touchdown for Texas A&M, but he throws it outside. See him right there. Nobody in his face. Nobody around him. Third and six now. Field position in this ball game has been key. Texas A&M has started average at their own 16. Now this one, the 43-yard line. That's a lot of difference. McGee out of the shotgun, and he's completed to Riley. Riley ridden hard near the 50-yard line where Webb makes the stop. Now, why do you throw a two-yard pass when you need to get six yards? You know, it's kind of kind of strange here. You got a two-yard pass right here to Riley, and guess what? You just break up like Webb does here and make the tackle. Not sure I like that play call. Texas missed all of last year with knee injury. At 10 receptions on the season coming in here today. That one not good enough to get him a first down. And as Gary mentioned, and now it's fourth and three. And coming on to kick, Brantley. High snap this time, but he handles it. Lamb gets away from it, and it goes into the end zone for a touchback and out to the 20 yard line for KU. A 50 yard punt. So Kansas survives the fumble, and we'll get the football back with 8 19 remaining on our Dr. Pepper game of the week. They're on their own 20-yard line with a five-point lead. John Cornish slips behind the line of scrimmage. Cornish, 121 yards rushing before that carry, and he has been the KU running attack. Bill, you mentioned it going into break that uh, Texas A&M, excuse me, Kansas escaped that fumble. Nothing really bad happened. Texas A&M not able to take uh, take advantage of great field position, start their 43-yard line, so now they saddle up again here at their own 20. Now, KU had four turnovers last week in Lincoln in the overtime loss, and they had five turnovers in the overtime, the double overtime loss at Toledo. So they've been a team. If they protect the football, they win the game. Second down and 12, ball on the 18, and here's a wild one as Barman tries to toss it to Cornish as he escaped the wrath of Chris Harrington. Well, there's a difference between a throw, a toss, and a shot put. That was a shot put, and it wasn't very good. Shot puts it right over his uh, tailback, John Cornish. First down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Whether you order a big screen TV or a comfy chair, it all ships for just $2.95. Shop and save at Overstock.com. So a third down and 12 for Kansas here. Still plenty of time to go. 726. You can see both teams tightening up just a little bit here. I'm right here. Farming out of the shotgun. Cornish beside him. Lamb split on the near side here. Incomplete. Find the nearest KU player to the football, but a bunch of Aggies circling like vultures, covered by Melvin Bullock. Yeah, trying to get your tight end Derek Fine across the field here, but he's going to take a shot here. The ball's overthrown. Good job by Texas A&M. Wasn't going to allow that first down anyway. The ball thrown short. K 
Kansas led this one 10 nothing a lane touchdown made it 10 7 and then KU with Webb a pair of field goals sandwiched around a safety and 18 7 before McGee's two yard run made it 18 13 on the first play of the fourth quarter now back to punt it as Kyle Tucker low snap poor kick he shanks it out near the 35 yard line and the 34 it appears is where it's going to mark and we talk about that field position and Tucker that's been the bugaboo he for the most part has kicked the daylights out of the ball but when he's been bad he's been really bad yeah and when you have a bad putt like that it just really really upsets you and there's there's fine coming in late getting on the other side of the field here I don't know if that's upset his rib but you know everything's just pretty much in place there you snap the ball back and just got to execute you got to drop that ball punt him like you've done it every time in practice and make a good effort he knows it from the outset that it's it was a bad uh, a bad punt so they get the ball great field position now 16 yards is all they get on the kick so it's first and 10 Aggies at the 34 of Kansas Javorski Lane stiff arms one man he's to the 25 and slides down to the 22 yard line as Lane gets 12 yards on the pickup before Webb finally pulls a halt to it pretty nifty 275 pounder don't you think gets outside here on the inside draw play watch him do a little face stiff arm there to Jerome Kemp it's on the outside around the corner of the defense not your average speed for a 275 pounder. He's been averaging about 13 carries a game. That's just his eighth carry today for 43 yards. But he does have a TD. And it's first and 10 at the 22. Fake to Goodson. McGee faking nobody out, though. And he is brought down hard. A loss on the play. The Kansas defense trying to answer the challenge. And James Holt, a sophomore, Altus, Oklahoma, makes the play. Just defense here, pursuit here. Justin Holt comes underneath the tailback, doesn't go for the fake, and he's just going to fall to the quarterback and does a nice job of just going to him. The quarterback was going to come back, and I think probably drop it down to the tailback, but good job by Holt finishing the play. You're pushing him back, trying to get him out of field goal range as well if you're Kansas. And the AM knowing there's still plenty of time, they want to get some kind of score here. Second and 15. And McGee overthrows Goodson. Goodson had a little room to roam out there. I'm wondering what's happening to Martellus Bennett. Not into the mix here for Texas A&M in the first half. He had some pretty good production for this football team, and we saw that going on. And really wondering what happened here, why he's not in the game plan. Third and 15. Ball on the 27. McGee, they got him! Oh, mama, did he get rocked at the 35-yard line. Blakesley with the sack for the Jayhawks. I beg your pardon, Kemp with that hit. Well, it's going to be a safety blitz from the weak side, and Jerome Kemp's going to come here. Nobody's going to touch him. He runs right by the running back and steps underneath, and no protection there for the quarterback, Steve McGee, and this has got to hurt, folks. Lucky he did not dislodge that football and get away from him. Good presence there by Steve McGee of holding on to a huge play here for KU. And McGee had the concussion last week. It's fourth down and 23 now. McGee. Got some time, and he delivers across the middle, and this one is knocked loose on another hammer shot as Bennett got knocked away from it by Rivera. Wow. Excellent timing here by the linebacker, Rivera, on the throw to Martellus Bennett coming down the field, and watch this, folks, right there. Bingo, he catches the football. Nope, going to get that out of there. Big Martellus Bennett, he's actually bigger than the linebacker, Rivera, but uh, good collision here, dislodges the football. That got this crowd juiced here as KU takes over on downs. And it's first and 10 from the 35. Clock running with 4.54. 53 to go. First and 10 at the 35 yard line. And this advantages the offense KU on the change of possession. The clock starts. 
and Cornish. And let's check in with Mike Goldberg and a Dr. Pepper game break. Bill, thank you very much. Bottom of the hour. Number two, USC is at home. They have won 25 straight conference games, 28 in a row at the Coliseum, led this season by John David Booty, who's thrown three touchdowns in three of his first four games played. It's Washington, USC, bottom of the hour. I thought we were going to get an Arkansas update there. I don't know Billy Ray wants to get that in. He's holding all the information to himself. We need a Billy Ray update That's here. That's right. Find out what's going on with that. That's the mic, Mike. <laughs> Second down at six. Ball on the 39 here as KU is trying to put away the Texas A&M Aggies. And keeping it on the ground as Cornish moves it five yards. And A&M taking a timeout here, Bill. Going to try to conserve as much time on the clock. But, heck, this is going to be a tough thing for them to do. they got second and uh, third and one, it looks like. Timeout is called. Concern on the face of Coach Fran with his club down 18-13. Huge play early in this ballgame. Tucker with the pass to McAnderson. 48 yards considered a pass play. And that set up Kansas' first touchdown. Fields got a TD pass from Barman. Their only touchdown. And it is third down and one. And nothing doing. It doesn't look like they're going to call a timeout here. Let's check in with another Dr. Pepper game break. Well, guys, you asked for it, and you have it, Gary Reasons. Arkansas at number three, Auburn. Both Darren McFadden and Felix Jones have rushed for over 100 yards today. Houston, not in Arkansas, about to sweep both Alabama and Auburn for the first time since 1998. About 310 left. Arkansas leads 2710. Uh, Billy Ray has got to be happy in the studio. <laughs> he wants to do that game break, I tell you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. All right, as a Houston nut happy there, right here. The Aggies get the big defensive stop, call a timeout, 3.38 to go, fourth and one. Well, what do you do if you're Mark Mangino? Do you punt it? You bet you do. You don't go for it for fourth and one. You're trying to get it. Field position is key right now, and you want to make Texas A&M go as far as you can down the field to perhaps get a score. They need to get a touchdown to get in, you know, to get back in this ball game. So you want them to take them to the full length. So there's no, not even a thought process here for Mark Mangino to go for here on fourth down. And... AM going to come after Tucker. He shanked one last time for 16. Or do you try to set up a return? There's a couple of things you can do. Set your return up. You got Schrader back there going to field the punt return, and he's a speedy guy, and he can get some yardage that way. But also, you've seen a punter here just has kind of an up and down kind of an afternoon with, the, with Tucker. He threw the ball for a completion. He's punted it very well inside the 50, but when he's trying to leg one out, hasn't got a got a hold of one yet today. Well, the Aggies, I was saying, hey, forget all our woes. Get the ball, go score, we're going to win the football game, fellas. You bet. I mean, for all that's happened here today. Kansas, though, huge defensive stop last time. Let's see what happens here, though, on the punt. Fourth and one. And Tucker. Wow. Oh, he just pounds it all the way into the end zone. That was a 60-yard punt. Yeah, so... <laughs> Officially 56 and oh, the four into the end. Yeah, do that. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line, and that's the Aggies. 3:31 to go. They only have one timeout remaining now. And you see the results here. The second half possessions for Texas A&M. The one touchdown there. Really nothing else. The the negative play there. The safety obviously was is huge in this ball game because it gave field position to to, to Kansas. But now with a chance to you know get up on top of this ball game. Three and a half minutes to go. The ball on the 20-yard line, they got to take the length of the field. So here's McGee. There, he's 18 to 35 for 165 yards today. We've got Lane back there in the backfield with him. Lane with eight carries and 43 yards. Taylor to about the 20. 7-yard line. Let me see if they change their posture here. Get up the line of scrimmage and call the play from the line and move a little quicker. Looks like the kind of a half huddle, so so to speak, for Steve McGee. Taking time here now. That, that clock is running. Should be running. Yeah, it is. Yep. Not really too concerned about the time, it looks like. Second down and two. McGee, incomplete. 
And once again, Kansas making some hits. Tlaib on Schrader that time. Well, I think Schrader lost his ball before Tlaib got there. Good throw here by the quarterback. Steve McGee get it out there. I don't think Tlaib contacts him before the ball pops out of his hands. Sure does. He's lucky he's turning upfield, trying to get moving before he catches that football. So a third down and two or three yards here for Texas A&M. Schrader, superb athlete, and uh, good hands, too. That's a rarity that uh, he would not hang on, especially for a senior. And it's third down now. 2.43 to go. And McGee completes this one out to Riley. And that will move the chains. He got just enough. Riley comes up hobbling just a bit. We saw this player in the ballgame who comes up and goes outside. And he lays it down there to him. It's all out blitz that time by KU. Wanted to make that quarterback throw the ball. Without any opportunity, does a good job of getting it out of the backfield. Clock moving again. First and 10 at the 32 of AM. Watch out. And the pressure on him again as Jerome Kemp had that bone crushing sack earlier. He had delay safety blitz. Jerome Kemp on the near side of the field is going to take a hesitation. Here's Jerome Kemp back here. He stops, and he's going to go inside of the defensive end who comes up the field. He gets in the B gap, and good contact there on Stephen McGee. Makes him throw a bad ball. And second and 10 now. Clock does stop, 2.22 remaining. One timeout for Texas A&M. Kansas with an 18-13 lead. Last couple of plays, defensive coordinator Bill Young to choose him to put pressure on Stephen McGee. See how he calls it here. Taylor broke a tackle, dives forward, and gets near the 39-yard line where Justin Thornton of the Jayhawks, redshirt freshman from St. Joseph, Missouri, the tackler, but a seven-yard pickup. And a third and short, they're going to call it third and three here. Again, pressure inside there. A good job of the protection up front for Texas A&M, allowing our quarterback to stand in there and throw that football. Inside two minutes to go. McGee to Bennett. And the first down, Texas A&M. And Bennett got out of bounds to stop the clock with 150 remaining. Now, taking the ball down the field in three or four and five yard chunks is not the easiest thing to do, but it's getting first downs here for Texas A&M. Still got plenty of time, a minute and 50 left to go in this ball game. Steve McGee has shown that he's poised and comfortable back there from the quarterback spot and making these, these reads. Kansas has been blitzing on every single down here, trying to put pressure on them, and they're forcing their defensive backs to be one-on-one -on -one all over the field with these receivers. Kansas never beaten AM in Big 12 play. They've lost all four previous meetings. AM wins the series 6 1 overall. This one incomplete. No! He hangs on for the football. It was nearly incomplete, nearly an interception, and then a completion. Well, this is a zone coverage here by the defense. I hope you can hold it back there just a second. Right there. Hold it right there, guys. You see what's going to happen? That linebacker goes here, and then you got the receiver comes inside where the linebacker vacates. Good throwing lane there for the quarterback and great concentration by Schrader. Yeah, you know after that last one, he comes back and makes a heck of a play. First to ten after Schrader making the catch. And McGee again delivers to Joey Thomas this time. Tlaib makes the tackle. 125 remaining. The Aggies moving it well. They have one timeout to go. The ball now at the 40-yard line of Kansas. Well, if you just draw a line about five yards out from the defensive end at the top of the field and five yards deep, you just draw a circle there. That's where that's where Steve McGee is throwing that football on every single play and just getting three and four, five yards of the puck. Second down and five now for Texas A&M. Jaworski Lane back there with McGee. Complete. Riley couldn't hang on as he got hit at the impact moment there. Stuckey with the play. And good job by Stuckey contacting him there so he doesn't pull that ball in. Riley bobbled it. Well, third down again here for Texas A&M. Steve McGee has been completing these third down passes on this drive, so we're trying to throw another short one here perhaps to get that first down. And We've got one timeout left in this ball game. Third and five. Here they come. 
He unloads, and Riley's got room to roll. 25-20, looking for a block. He's at the 10. Riley out of bounds at the six, make it the five-yard line as Webb kept him from scoring a 35-yard play and 111 to go. Excellent play call here against this, the, the blitz. You got to have an inside screen. You come to Riley, and there's nobody in the middle of the field, folks, because they're all rushing the quarterback. You have some receivers running down the field to occupy some of the defensive backs, but great play call that time by Les Kenning, the offensive coordinator, on the middle screen against the blitz. First and goal from the six. 111 to go, one timeout remaining, and now you can actually run it if you want, and McGee does that. He gives to Lane, and Lane goes down to the two-yard line where Holt makes the tackle, and clock moving. Well, they can't, Kansas can call timeout here in this situation, but they're electing not to do so. They just want to put their defense out there and play, and Texas A&M, Bill, in the red zone this year, they have been fantastic, 85%. They've got 22, 22 opportunities they've converted on out of 26, 18 touchdowns, so they do get the ball in the end zone. They've got to have a touchdown, obviously. Down five, second and goal for the two. And Lane, he's in. Aggie score and take the lead. 19-18, Texas A&M with 34 seconds remaining. Nice workmanlike drive here by Texas A&M. Bring in your horse at the end of this drive to push it into the end zone. Javorski Lane, his 13th rushing touchdown on the season. All this was set up because of Stephen McGee moving the ball down the field methodically. Short passes, just moving the chains, doing a good job of converting on third down situations. So everything doing, everything working for Texas A&M on that drive. And you got to think about the calls for, for Kansas on allowing to go for a let them go for a full blitz against that screen pass and take another look here at the touchdown and the J train moving the offensive line no problem there for Texas A&M to get in the end zone so yeah the other thing is you had Kansas sitting down here you're in that dilemma do you call timeout saying it looks like they're gonna score we want to have some clock to work with they elected not to to force A&M to try to make a hurry up play well, hindsight's 20-20, but now you have 34 seconds to work with. Now, you th you're always thinking you're going to rely on your defense to stop them, and you don't want to let them, let them get in the end zone, let the clock expire, and make it be their problem. But but now they wish they had that time back, Bill, and I don't think they want to concede a touchdown in that situation. Well, for Mark Mangino, it is a 3-2 and two season, and those two losses, ouch. Overtime games. Toledo in a double overtime. Turnovers were huge in that one. They had five. And they lost on the road to Toledo, 37-31. And had a double overtime ball game. And the second loss last week against Nebraska again. In Nebraska, they were down 17-0 in that game in a place that they never win. And they come back and force overtime and lose 39-32 in the OT. And here today, well, they haven't lost since 04, a nine-game home winning streak on the line. And the Aggies, they're going to go for two, try to make it a three-point margin. McGee scampering around. And it is complete as Thomas makes the reception, and he used all of that six-foot-five frame to haul it in. So they get the two-point conversion. It's 21-18, and now a field goal would only tie for KU. Great protection up front here. Look at Stephen McGee. No problems as far as anybody in his face. They're only rushing four defenders there for KU, and that's just too long to cover receivers all over the field or in the back of the end zone. And Good job of throwing the ball up there to his tall tight end. Joey Thomas catching that football. And Bill, that was an excellent drive by Stephen McGee and the Texas Aggies, AM Aggies are coming down the field and executing on you know situations where you got to convert to get the first down. Every third down, they converted on that drive. And as a result, it's 21-18, 34 seconds to go. And now KU. This place is just absolutely silent now after AM. Just a stunning drive. Well, you've got two timeouts left if you're Kansas, and the ball, the, the clock is going to start ticking, folks, as after the ball is kicked. So there's going to be six or seven, maybe eight seconds before, uh, you know, with the ball in the air before Kansas is even going to touch the football. 
So on this play, it's probably going to take you know, 10 or more seconds off the clock, game clock. So when they do go back on offense, I'd be surprised if it's anything be maybe around 24, 22 seconds or so. Kansas with Jake Sharp, the deepest man. He lets it go. And well, it was a good situation for, for Kansas to allow him to kick it out of the end zone. Like, I would have kicked that down, let the clock run, and go ahead and make a tackle. You're going to lose more, lose more time off that clock. So four seconds go off the clock, and now Kansas, first and ten, a ball on the 20-yard line. Well, they've got to get it, probably get it inside of the 30-yard line for him to get a field goal opportunity here. That'd be around the 31-yard line would be of Texas A&M, where he could get to his top-end range. Well, Webb had a game winner against Iowa State for that 48-yarder last year. Oh, wow. First down pass out near the 40-yard line is complete to Brian Murph, and he gets out of bounds. 20 seconds to go. Well, you got the zone that's coverage deep here, and then, then Brian Murph's going to come underneath here on the outside, and good play design. You know you're going to be in a long yardage defensive set, and picks up 20-plus yards in that play. So it's at the 39 officially here. So first and 10, the clock the enemy with 20 seconds to go. Barman. Fires deep and gets rid of it. Clock stops 13 seconds to go. KU with two timeouts remaining. Yeah, it just takes time to get down the field, and that's what's against the Jayhawks right now. That took seven seconds off the, off the clock there. Good coverage in the secondary. They're not going to allow the big, big play. They may allow him to throw it down underneath and get five or ten yards. And remember, there is a timeout left. Excuse me, no timeouts. Kansas has the two timeouts left. Excuse me, Bill. They've got two left, so they can throw the ball in the middle of the field. Second out of ten. Barman being chased. Downs the football. And... There's seven seconds to go, and he was being rushed by Henry Smith and company. Smith, a redshirt junior out of uh, Aliceville, Alabama. Well, I don't think there's any time, enough time on the clock here with seven seconds to go where you can get the ball down to the 35-yard line or so for to even attempt a field goal. This is going to be perhaps the last play of the game and throwing it towards the end zone. And if you're AM, you're going to uh, keep everything in front of you. Let's see. Third and ten. Escape one man, throws it deep, and it is batted down, and that's the ball game. Texas A&M trailing throughout, scores with 34 seconds to go, and wins a thriller here in Lawrence. 21-18 Aggies, and an agonizing loss for Kansas, their first home loss of the year, and their first in their last 10 games. And... Justin Warren, our Cooper Tires defensive player of the game for his consistent standout play. Well, Justin Warren did a good job on defense for him. And I tell you what, Texas A&M did what they had to do to come back. Didn't look like they had a lot going on early in the third quarter, or even in the start of the fourth quarter, but they just kept plugging away. And Steve McGee, I was very impressed with him on that last drive, Bill, as far as bringing his team down the field. Terrific for the sophomore signal caller. Let's go down to Emily Jones with a happy Coach Franchoni. That's right. We'll find out if he is happy. Coach Fran, you said you had some stern words for your for your team at the half. Took a while to set in, but they finally got the got the message. Well, we had to survive a tough third quarter there with them having the wind at their back, and fortunately did a decent job of that, and and uh, then got the wind with us in the fourth quarter. And, all the points were scored down here today with the wind at your back, and that was a big factor. We talked early in the week about how your team would respond to having that win, um, or the loss, rather, against Texas Tech. Now you return the favor at home. What does this tell you about your team? Well, I've always said they're pretty gutty and pretty spirited, and, uh, you know, coming back, and then Kansas played very well. Let's tip our hat to Coach Mangino and his players. But uh, our kids made a couple more plays today and hung in there and kept believing, and they didn't play very well at times, but... Uh, Kansas had something to do with that, and they did find a way to win. Coach, congratulations on the win. We do appreciate it. A win is a win. Guys